What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today's episode of the podcast, you know who it's brought to you by. It's brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee. Let's surf over to blackriflecoffee.com. Right, meow. I'm looking at the dog days of summer. They have a special collection. I actually think I went through this last week. There's some collars, some leashes, some t-shirts. Cool stuff for coffee aficionados and dog lovers. And then, oh boy, God, I guess it is that season. The hunt for premium spice. The pumpkin spice coffee. How dare you automatically switch back on your own? Yep, pumpkin. Oh, let's just see what shop pumpkin spice looks like. Pumpkin spice roast. I mean, if this is your thing, this is your thing. I do love a good pumpkin cold brew. I'm not a pumpkin spice latte fan, but you know, now is the time. For those of you perhaps unfamiliar with the brand, if you go to blackriflecoffee.com, underneath the first rotating banner, there's all the bags of coffee that they have from light to extra dark. There's a little banner here that you can just slide across. And then if you want to dig deeper, shirts, stuff to make coffee out of bundles and samplers for those you want to expose to the brand. There's their social media and then their email list as well. People ask me all the time, what do I love about Black Rifle Coffee? I'm here to tell you I'm not a, a coffee snob by any stretch of the imagination. I care far more about the people that created the brand and what they stand for. And that's why I wanted to create a coffee shop on my own. That's why I have been a close uh, brand ambassador slash friend to many people inside of the organization. I think they're awesome. And maybe they're not your cup of tea, and that's okay. If you want to support the podcast, the best thing you can do is support them. Head on over to BlackRifleCoffee.com. My guest today... The first time he was here, he was here with his friend Bernardo shortly after the October 7th invasion, massacre. I don't know the correct way to describe it uh, in Gaza and Israel. His name is Richard Stadig, and I'm just going to read his bio to make sure that I don't mess it up. After witnessing anti-Semitism at Portland State University— Richard, an American Jew, moved to Israel to serve in the Israeli Defense Force. Richard served in the infantry and protected all major borders of the country. He later went on to serve in the Reconnaissance Brigade of his reserve unit. While serving in the reserves, Richard traveled to multiple college campuses, facilitating conversations based on his and fellow soldiers' experiences, focusing on the impact of national service and the importance of the Jewish state to defend itself. Right after October 7th, I had Richard and Bernardo come on, and they gave me their own... I'm going to say snapshot and opinion of what was going on in that area. They were able to break it down into a much more granular level of detail because they had served in those areas, in those forces. Richard specifically had served in one of the cities that was directly and violently impacted by what happened on October 7th. Um, Bernardo is off working, but Richard wanted to come back on, or I should say I wanted Richard to come back on because I think this is something that we should be talking about. I'm interested in his experience. I'm hearing a lot about the rise in anti-Semitism. I don't see it because I don't navigate in those worlds. And I love sitting down and talking with people, listening to their experiences, what they are experiencing in their life, the causes, the effects, what can be done about it. And that's what we did. So how about I shut up and we let Richard talk for himself. Hope you enjoy the episode. Okay, I got the red smoke. Gun run! North and south! West of the smoke! West of the smoke! Okay, copy. West of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Oh, I want it, man. They give it to me. I need it. Get cleared hot. Can't be cleared hot. Dude, it's been a minute. You're here solo today. I am. How I much am. can we talk about why you're here solo? Let's just say Bernardo yes. moved on to, that sounds like it's a dead dog. I was going to say, did yeah, he go like, on to a happier he, place? He went to a happier place. <laughs> Bernardo switched careers, and he is doing great things protecting people. Okay. Yeah. What so state is he living in? He's in the uh, west. Okay, the west. West. All right. Western Colorado area. Is that where he wants to be, or is this kind of like the place to get the foundation, and then he'll this move This is kind elsewhere? of where, I, was, I think he, he, he's set there. Him and his wife are very outdoorsy, adventurous people. Okay. And, so I think that's a good spot for them. They're, Texas is getting too hot. Texas is too hot. I personally love it. Really? Yes. I've the been, heat. Love it. Why? Because, listen, I'm going to sweat if it's cold or if it's hot. Either way, mine's will have an excuse, right? Just naturally. Why would you sweat if it's cold? Just, it's we'll naturally. That mic too. Uh, we're actually, we're getting sucker. personal right now. Naturally a sweaty guy. So, you know, that's it. 
All right. Yeah, I know. It's like hard medical to... condition now? No, no, no. Like if I exercise, that's what I'm saying. Like if I'm running and stuff like that, I'm going to yeah. be sweating. So like I might as well just have an excuse to go ahead and, and sweat more. Okay. It keeps me cool. Right? I like that you are your genuine. You have to be self. real. You have to. You have to be real. <laughs> so like the other, like I'm, I'm kind of training for an ultra marathon right now. Um, well, I was going to ask you because yes. you would message me, "Hey, I have to get in at what'd you say, twelve to thirteen? Yeah, mile twelve run? to thirteen miles." What was hilarious is that you asked me that. Well, I figured like you hike. Like okay, <laughs> l- l- to be fair, don't you go hiking around here? No, you don't hike. Sometimes. I mean, like it's the same thing. You know, the last time I went on yeah. a hike. How do I politely say this? My wife directly lied to my face, Uh said it was going to be a short hike. Uh Five miles in, we were at the halfway point. Then we came back out, and I almost shot a goat in the face because it was squaring off with us in a parking lot (laughs) in a national park. And my wife is watching me as (laughs) – I don't – I'm trying to remember if it peeled off from the little group. I think it might have gotten separated from the group. A rogue goat. Yes. We're talking like a a – like a sheep, like one of those uh, yes. mountain goats. Yes. Wow. And it was in an asphalt parking lot that has overnight camping. And I think that they can kind of do whatever they want to do because sure. they're a protected species. Yep. We shuffled off to the side. Yeah. It squared up with crazy eyes and was looking at me as if it was going to charge. So <laughs> I am immediately preparing myself. Right. Did you come to draw or you were no. like right there? In position? Did not come to draw. Okay. And my wife. Is just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, n- not a good outcome, you know, when, for you, when anybody, you shoot a protected chance animal. I'm getting in, tr- in trouble yes, for that. for sure. In but 100% lot. chance that I'm not letting my wife get charged for sure. in a national park. Definitely. So that was my last hike. Okay, I got it. So that's why I don't hike. And it's uh, – is it that enjoyable? Aren't there better ways that you can see things? Yeah, by running. No. You get to cover more ground. I don't know in if less you time. know this, but if you know how to fight, oh. you don't have to run. Got it. That's true. I should probably learn. Well, you just said you're ready to start <laughs> jujitsu. I you, will. In what November. have you been up to since then? Well, yeah, you know, Does having to start a, with a K. You know, so let, let's start. Uh, yeah, there's been, there's been a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Does it start with a Krav? A, a little Krav Maga. Yeah. So my which Krav, everybody talks shit on, and I have no issue with it. You know, there's nothing wrong with Krav Maga. I think that there's a lot of instructors that moved to America to make a lot of money and foot in Hollywood, and have talked about you know the Krav Maga being super deadly and stuff. But honestly, it's a great way of teaching people aggression, and that's what's important in the fight. I think all adult males. Mm-hmm. Should know how to fight, hundred percent. And I think they should be tested to that degree because it really rounds the edges. It lets you know what's possible, and that there's always somebody out there that could whip your ass. It lets you know that even if you win, it could be painful. And the more you're around violence, the less you want to participate in it. Hundred percent. I I think it's amazing. I think all men should be capable of violence and should avoid it at all costs. I think most of the most capable people I know are the least likely to be in fights ever. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, though. If you go to the U- – I went to the UFC uh, a few months ago. Which one? Uh, Vancouver. It was actually more like – The Couve. Yeah. More like eight months ago or, or longer okay. than that. Anyways, went to the fights there. Saw some fighters, completely the most chill people in the world, right? There was more fights that I've seen from <laughs> untrained individuals than I have in my entire life. I'm talking like people paying $10,000 in the front row floor, getting in massive fights. Um, my buddy Elliot, he, run, he does security over there uh, for the UFC. He texts me. He's like, fuck, dude. This is fucking insane. Um, yeah, just a bunch of untrained fights. You'll see people swinging, Hail Marys, everything like that. The amount of testosterone, steroids, and acts that I felt in that arena was overwhelming. What's amazing yes. is that the people who fight in the cage, right. the most capable people Chillest in the room, in the world. won't do shit unless there's a check. 100%. 100% because <laughs> they're smart. Yeah. Yes. They say, no. Nope. nope. I'm going to pass If you want to pay me to fight you. I will. Absolutely. Once you've, you've, you've signed off on that disclaimer, you're, I'm Got good to go. Got your blood check maybe. 100%. No herpes, no yeah. AIDS. We're good to go. Yeah, 100%. But anyways, it, it was it was heavy because I've been a lifelong fan of mixed martial arts since I was like 15. I've been okay. watching it and uh, watched every single pay-per-view overseas. I've watched it, everything like that. Finally went to my first event that I could like afford to like see it in person, stuff like that as I got older. And it was just I was just overwhelmed by the uh, uh, no, the words, not toxic masculinity. It is the machismo that you had over there and the lack of people that could fight. I mean, it doesn't around. surprise me, though. Yes. Lee and I went to UFC 300. Oh, which was pretty cool, but I'll yeah. be honest, if I'm offered the opportunity to go again, I'm going to pass. Same. 
because I really appreciate the commentary, which you can't hear in the room. 100%. And we were in a place, we had two places that we could go. It's not that the view was bad, right? but it doesn't compare to what you can see on TV. And the expert panel of people breaking down in real time, I love it. Definitely. 100%. We actually came back. And I bought the pay-per-view so I could hear the commentary for Definitely. the fights we had already seen. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, watch parties are great, you know, getting yep. your friends together, listen to the commentary. I'm all about it. Small shows are great, too. Yeah. Every once in a while, I go to a small show. That's nice. You could hear the commentary a bit better. People aren't as crazy and stuff. Maybe so, the yeah. Apex Center would be the move on God, that That's one. kind of how to get to that level. That's kind of like the goals for me in the future. So I could. I think it them. might be cheaper. Really? It's I, a smaller venue. I know, but I've heard that it was more of like for the elite because they rent out the whole place and like it's really intimate. So it actually is harder to get into. But I'll have to, I'll have to circle back on that. Well, there's main cards, right. you know, like big pay-per-views. Yes. This last weekend, we just watched the fights and it was at the Apex. It was just right. a fight night. Usually it's the fight nights. Yes. I feel During like- COVID, they had main events there, but now it's mostly just like the fight nights are, are at the Apex. Can you Google whether or not a pay-per-view in-person ticket or a fight night ticket would be cheaper? The, the internet is an amazing right, no. thing. So Fight Night is probably cheaper because it's lesser events, I, think I would so. think, right? But then it might entice but, people to buy out the whole place. Because right. I know Mark cheap. Zuckerberg did that. A few people have done that. So I mean, if you can, fucking do it. When you have an have unfathomable own, amount of wealth, why would you not do I that? I mean, I'd have my own Coliseum. I'd build really? out a Coliseum. Yeah, why not? Where? Should I just go with Mark Zuckerberg and say Hawaii? Just have a Col- <laughs> Coliseum there in Hawaii while it's there? What have you found? Michelle? Miguel, Michelle. Are you talking live? Yeah, like what would a ticket cost? There? Yeah, like at the gate. I feel like a pay-per-view gate is going to be more expensive. Probably. Um, <clears throat> I'm still looking. Oh, okay. What do I even pay you for? I don't know. I love this hostile work <laughs> environment again. Yeah. Uh, I, there was no just like straight up comparison, so I have to look at each one individually. Ah, so it'll take us to do the math. Yeah, get back All right, to get us. On the yeah, numbers, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Why, uh, uh, why go to jujitsu instead of just staying with Krav? Well, I did Krav really limitedly, honestly. I did Krav... Um, in the military, right? Yeah. A little bit afterwards. Um, I think Jiu-Jitsu's community is phenomenal. It's awesome. The people. It's pretty it. cool. There's not, and I wrestled in high school, okay. which I love. I love that that grappling. Um, so yeah, as soon as I finish my ultra marathon in November, I'll start Jiu-Jitsu. I've already told Tenth Planet down there, Phil Schwartz. I'm, I'm committed. It's going to happen. He's cool. He comes up here sometimes. Yeah, he teaches it or has taught twice at the Big Fork. So I host my pig. Well, it's actually Ed Calderon's class, but I'm I'm the host, and we do the pig class at his gym every year there. Is that short for law enforcement? No, it okay. should be though. No, it's not. It's actually it's a pig. Uh, uh, we, we you learn about you learn about. Uh, oh, you're talking about uh, live tissue training. Yeah, pretty okay. much. But it's not medical life tissue trainer. It's more of an impact weapon, live tissue training, blades, how blades work. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. that should scare people away from ever wanting to be in a knife fight. It teaches a lot, especially when you get the jujitsu guys coming in. You give them some fake knives, and they learn. Yeah, yeah. I'll get messed up. I would take. Well, first off, I would take not getting shot or stabbed as primary. But if I Definitely. had to choose yeah. between shot or stabbed, I would rather get shot. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, yes. I'm currently trying to determine the exact number that Michael would demand for me to shoot him in the ass. <laughs> we talked about this. We were at ten thousand, and he said he might let me do it. A ten thousand? Seriously? Dude, yes. His medical bills would be more than ten thousand. You're yeah, not helping the situation <laughs> right now. God damn it! Also, Seriously. Uh, so fight night thirty or uh, cheapest are thirty dollars. Okay. What? UFC three hundred six cheapest. Twenty four hundred dollars. Okay, well, we might need to go to Vegas. Answer. Are you serious? Thirty dollars for the Apex? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sure the seats are really bad. I don't, it's small. They're, it's a well, small venue. Well, thing. this isn't Apex. It might not be that. It, well, it might not be that bad because I, I can only speak for the Apex. It's tiny. Yeah, it's small. So even a bad seat there, I think, is much closer than you're going to get for a bad seat. Like we went to the T-Mobile Arena. Yeah. There, there's some nosebleeds. Oh, yeah, wait, sure. hold on. This is at the Sphere. Let me look at a different. At the Sphere. Because the Sphere is always expensive from what I hear. And they're of only going to do that once, once. I believe. Yeah, yeah. that's that. Um, hold on, let me do it. I, I can't pronounce it. It's going to be Sunday Noche Night of um, this year. It, Mexican Independence Day, they're doing the fight that weekend. At the Sphere. Cinco de Mayo? No, that's not Mexican Independence Day. That's actually the commem- commemoration of a big battle that they won. And that's when we always get in trouble as gringos for saying it's Mexican Independence Day, but it's not actually. I said it more of a inquisitive tone. Inquis- yeah, yes, sure. yes, yes. No, I'm just putting it out there for the people, <laughs> so now we know. Michael, so, not the sphere is actually also thirty dollars. So I think just because it's the sphere, they're really upcharging. Well, they're only going to do it once, is yeah. my understanding. Yeah. Unrelated, Michael, twenty grand to shoot you in the ass. Um, grazing shot through the cheek, through and through. Like, would would I? Is the shot I would have to go to the hospital for, or could we just bandage it up? Shooter's choice. 
<laughs> yeah, is that how it works if usually? Can, <laughs> if you can guarantee that it takes like let's not a start centimeter sense. of let's skin not start off sentences only. Like that. More of a circumstance. Okay, then in that case, I want to. The full round has to penetrate your cheek. Oh, so that's like a, a, a full bullet hole. Yeah. You said grazing. That is not grazing. Grazing just inside I mean, the skin. I don't want to say it. I mean, Trump. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for him. God, have you seen? Yeah, the commentary a... people saying he faked that. It's pretty crazy. As I, I am a competent marksman, I worked with many other competent marksmen. Right. There oh. is not a single one of them that I know that I would trust to shoot me in the fucking ear. No. <laughs> no, fuck that. I mean, seriously. There is, I don't care, from 130 right. yards with the most dialed in scoped rifle. No way. None of the snipers that I worked with would I trust to just graze my head. No, no. I mean, what a crazy week in, in America. I was just having this conversation with my wife in the course of, I think it was eight days, because I believe that happened to Trump on a Saturday. It was last Saturday. And right. Biden backed out on a Sunday. Yeah, eight, eight days, days later. What? Where are we? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. And I and I think it, I think it unsettles a lot of people. It doesn't bother me in the least, right? Because I think this is just the way that it goes. And I think sometimes being upended helps you kind of evolve, yeah. and move forward. We're still in a pretty good spot in human history, like as far as safety in human history. Yeah, all today in this moment, sitting yeah. at this table, it is the safest time in the history of human history to be alive. I think we've just had a lot of, I don't want to say privilege, but it's been a luxury for us in the last hundred, the hundred words. Pretty yeah, accurate too. Pri- <laughs> yeah. Well, so I think a lot of people worked for that, that privilege, right. That we have sure. the safety and security and the economy. And, but and that just is a rock that rolls down hill. Sure, hundred people, you know, a yeah. hundred years before that. What are your thoughts on the shooting of Trump? What was your initial thought when you saw that? Sad, dark, yeah. historical, uh, a little bit of disbelief. How about and then the belief? Secret Service reaction? Okay. So, <laughs> all right. first of all, I'm not a expert in this. I'll tell you my background is pretty limited, but I, I used to work in personal protection for a while. Mm-hmm. After the military, I worked for a family. This, and again, maybe they know something I don't, mm-hmm. but that lack of a prompt and speedy evac is something I've never seen before. So I've read, Michael, please confirm this, that it took them two minutes to get him off the podium. Yeah. And again, I so we trained for, we called it, I think we called it PSD. And PSD, yeah. Personal security detail. Yep. Um, in my mind, and I'm not, I am not one to criticize the Secret Service. I have an immense amount of respect for what they do. And also, what I have said recently is that the Hubble telescope is going to be turned around anyway and inserted directly up their asshole. Yeah. So the things are going to come Hopefully. out that, that need to come out. So Respectfully. It, yeah, I don't need to. Uh, I don't know if it's a respectful way to get the Hubble telescope up there. Regardless, <laughs> people who are really good at figuring out what happened and why will right. do that. I can save my commentary on that for later. My understanding of PSD is that especially given, A, that were shots fired, B, that there was an injury – immediately to a hardened vehicle and that thing hauls ass mm-hmm. to either a helicopter or a higher level of care like that immediately yeah and especially the fact that they said shoot her down okay threat's done well assuming that there's only one right, right? assuming have, assuming correct. but, in the, but they're enough that they're articulating the threat is down yeah and there still is a pause in movement why was he up there for two minutes why yeah it was let's say 611 shots are fired okay 612 uh, quote, are you ready? Move, the Secret Service agents say, but stay in their positions, keeping Trump under the podium. Um, and then it doesn't say, as I'm, they prepare to exit, Trump raises his fist. So it looks like 612, so like, yeah, two minutes. I'm going to assume that the podium was not ballistic. I don't know how they roll. If you don't have your principal behind a hardened structure. Mm-hmm. Besides and, yourself. Which, right? given a uh, 556 five, round at that distance at 130 yards, even with ball ammunition, 100% zipping through. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were wearing hard plates. I, I think they were so wearing soft, soft vests. Yep. I mean, they have might... soft. They have armor rated soft now. They yeah, do that's out there nowadays. I was going to say, if it zipped through, it might have caught it on the back end. Yeah. But let's say an extremity shot Still. through shoulder or something like sure. that. It's going to go through. You have to get the principal the fuck 100%. out of there. And the fact that they, I mean, if my principal is waving to a flag 
right? I'm being combative and I'm dragging him off the stage. That's what happened. Well, did you see the size of the people trying to drag him off the stage? Yeah. yeah. No, no they, real words for that. Well, there's a lot of real words, words for that. <laughs> and this is where I fall back to standards have to be blind. I do. You either meet this. And I also mm-hmm. don't know the standards for the Secret Service. So every agent up there may have met the standard in training to achieve that role. But if you're going to guard a principal – Trump's over six feet, isn't he, Michael? I mean, maybe. Let me look. He's like six three. Okay, so and, yeah. therefore, the standard for that is going to need to change a little bit. If your principal is six three in whatever he weighs, let's say he's an—I'm not saying him, but let's say you have a principal that is six three, an athletic two fifty. I don't know that a qualified agent who weighs under two hundred pounds, maybe closer to one fifty than two hundred, who is a foot shorter meets the standard of protection for that principle. Not at all. I mean, on the private side, people are picked on height all the time to match their principle. It yeah. happens all the time. But what if the principle goes down? You have to be, able, have to be able to move to pick them. them up all the time. So, th- But the fact they won't do that for a former president? Like, this is this is basic EP 101 stuff. And I'm not trying, I'm not, I don't want to go down that route of like armchair quarterbacking at all. Yeah. I only worked in the industry three or four years, so not a lifetime or anything like that. But it's just, Basic, evacuate the principal off the X, get them to evac, and get them to your, your planned advanced hospital. Right. It's, also, look at your holster when holstering and yeah. get it done the first it time. It feels like they were never tested in training, right? Like they were not pushed in under distress. They haven't done UTM. They haven't done sim work. It felt like they'd never run the, these scenarios before. One of the questions recently. I have for them, too, I wonder if they ever shoot at them with live rounds. And I don't mean... Right. In the kill house. Sense of, No, for sure. So what we used to do, and we didn't do this often, but I did this a couple times throughout my career, is we would go get behind. Well, this happened all the time when we were yeah. in sniper school. You're in the butts. And the butts, for people listening, are not what you think. It's not uh, like Miami Beach, the butts. It's a berm. <laughs> right. That right. Bullets impact if the rounds come in short, and you raise up targets. Mm-hmm. People shoot at them. You lower them. You can score them. You put them back up, and that way they don't have to go back and forth. You hear the snap. But we would do that with 5.56. Five, 762 suppressed subsonic uh pistol rounds and you get used to the sound of the snap i don't know i don't know if and, and this is just again me watching that video if anybody in that video had ever been shot at before which if your job is reacting to gunfire mm-hmm. i would feel like that is a critical component in your training you can yeah. safely do it to understand yeah. what it sounds it's like. pretty standard you would think. You would think, right? So is holstering your think. pistol. That's true. And then at least, like, you can't holster. At least she didn't have her finger on the fucking trigger. But then I saw another one had dropped her gun. It looked like. Stop it. That's uh, that's what I have seen. Again, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but I had seen somebody had the other. What about the picture of the individual hiding behind Trump as he was dropping to the ground? Maybe she. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How dare you assume her gender? Fuck, I just did I, too. I screwed up again. That was you. <laughs> I, I did. Oh, wait. I'm not trying to make this a DEI right. no, conversation. It, it was from, from, from what I saw on TV, it was disgraceful, to be honest. But again, it just seemed like there was no training. There was no involvement. There was no advance done. Um, well, if all of those things were done, let's assume that they were. The execution in the moment. Very poor. Holy cow. Very poor. I have questions. I have yeah. a lot of questions. I don't understand. I also don't understand how a 20-year-old kid who has clearly had issues mm-hmm. got to 130 yards from a presidential candidate That's what's under crazy. a security detail of both local, federal, and secret service. And they only had about, what, five buildings in that general area? Like, nobody was put on the roof because it was called sloped yeah. and too dangerous to be posted and then on? They p- people post the picture of the White House roof that's like this with this yeah. counter sniper. Exactly. It. It's like, I mean, this is like basic protection work 101. This is Secret Service. That's like the high level. You're guarding the president, former presidents, heads of states. How do you think that happens? I don't know how it happens. I mean, is that where our country's at right now? Is that we our government has gone down to that level with the lowest standards I that think we've seen in modern history? It could be that. Yeah. I think. And... I may be wrong on this, but I think that's the first live shot that the counter sniper team for the Secret Service has ever taken. I think that these people train in an environment and are almost never actually tested other than Reagan. And, and again, these are things that that, but make, that was his detail that, that, that stopped the shooter. Dude, they had him into the car in a half a second. That's true. And they also stopped the threat there. 
But Correct. It was a cipher. Yes. But what I'm saying, so again, I think that happened in the 80s. It was the 80s, yeah. So we're talking 40 plus years. Is it just the complacency that creeps in when you're not tested? Yeah. I mean, let's see. I think the answer is probably a combination of all the things we're talking about. Right. And then also, I mean, who appoints Secret Service directors, right? It's by administrations. I know this. this is it? Last, I don't know. I, yeah. I know this This last Secret Service director, I think, I believe she was, she left, she went to the private sector, and then she was brought back by the president appointed Secret Service director. And she used to be on the president's wife's detail, and she was very fond of her, what okay. I've heard. So it's, is it by favors, right? Is it not the best person for the job who sets the standard for that whole organization? Is it political? I mean, that's. That could be a possibility as well. Or is it all those things? All of them, right. I feel like it's a it's a huge pot of soup that has a little bit of ingredient of yeah. all of those things. But it's really sad. It is really sad, and I really hope that they make the changes that need to be made. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, they need to have two legitimately... Minutes. Two minutes on the boat. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I just... And then when they said move, every, I mean, we all know, like, you know... You make a command, you follow it, right? You don't stop, you don't stall. Sometimes you do. That's <laughs> 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 bad. I mean, listen. All right. Everybody fucks up once or twice. To not but... make this a complete conspiracy yeah. rabbit hole, uh, dude. What do you? So I talked to you guys. You and Bernardo right. came. Yes. That was a rabbit hole. Um, was it October? Open it under the table. Otherwise, you'll get the complaint of the least like <sighs> noise on the internet. Sorry, internet. Yeah. I mean, I've read the internet comments, saying they're not even fan of me, so it's okay. What did they say? Not a few things. Such as? You know, genocidal pusher. Um, well, just remember that and, whatever you believe, right. whatever anybody on earth right. believes, you have an axis somewhere who believes the opposite of you. 100%. As deeply as you do, and they have the internet too. So it's be true. careful with the internet. It's shame. <laughs> no, it's your shame. No, it just <laughs> Honestly, they're mostly ragging Bernardo. So like just How personal come? attacks. I don't know. They, they were, they were prop. They, they're very rude. They were very rude. It's okay. Well, this goes back to men and violence. It's true. In an environment, like how many of those people do you think? <laughs> if I were able to find them, Michael, this is our next show. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to find Bernardo. We're going to find five of those people that yes. made those comments. We will clear this studio out. The walls will have nails driven into them facing the other direction so that you wouldn't want to contact them and the person has to come into the room only with bernardo and read their comment to him and suffer the consequences that'd be phenomenal but here's the choice they either get to read the comment right or they can apologize for their comment that they made in a consequence free environment they might come to Jesus that day. That is a test of humanity, right? There. Yeah, let's do it. Let's well, let's make it happen. You know what it is? No, though? for sure. That's the difference between a consequence-free environment mm-hmm. and a consequential environment. Nobody says that shit to somebody's face. They only do it when they have this third-party medium in between, and they know that that person literally can't reach in and grab right. their shit. One hundred percent. And it's a great shield, right? It's that digital yeah. shield where they're going to talk all the shit they want. Well, there's the an anonymity associated with it as well. That's true. That's so. very true. That's very true. Well, hopefully Bernardo did not uh, take it too personally. No, I don't think he read the comments. I read the comments. I had more time. You know what's interesting yeah. as well? I've noticed this in the uh, years I've been doing this. Yeah. People who have what, – what's a kind way to say this? People who trend a little bit more towards the negativity side mm-hmm. of the house, I – it is my suspicion and I have no data to support this. But anecdotally, this is what I feel. They are often more vocal and active than those who trend more towards the positivity side. And that might right. be because the people who are trending more towards the positivity side are actually out in the real world doing amazing things for their life, their friends, their family, mm-hmm. their community. Whereas those who are trending on the negativity side, maybe they don't have those outlets. So their outlet becomes, I'm going to tear everything down. Yeah, I'm going to burn burn all the ships, burn people's world. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. Anecdotally, that's what I feel. I'm I mean, not sure it's correct. Honestly, uh, we don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but like, I took a class in college that I had to take on leisure. I hated it during the time. Leisure? Leisure. Leisure. Yeah. Yeah. Did and you just sit like couches and stuff, or what did you do? I wish. No. It was learning about societies and how different societies take on volunteer work, leisure, family, community, hobbies. Okay. And this was in Israel, right? And I was talking how Israel actually has some of the highest percentage of volunteers in, in, in the world. Okay. And also, they have some of the most... Um, 
like grandmother, grandparent, elderly visits. And they talked about how that kind of led to a more positive society because people were like acting towards making changes every single day, but it was part of their culture. And that had them be more relaxed in an environment you would think there's actually a lot higher stress living in the Middle East, you mm-hmm. know, war, taxes, living in a desert, all those sorts. If you give people a purpose right. and you and they see the impact of their work, right. I think it really hedges a lot of those other things. It makes those things more background noise than front mm-hmm. and center. Yeah, definitely. Huh. And I mean in Israel everybody starts with that from an early age from national service. Yeah. And how do we uh, how do we recap the first episode? Obviously, yeah, let's Bernard, recap the first episode. Well, Bernard is obviously not here. Right? Did you guys come in in November? No, we came a week after the attacks. Okay, I couldn't remember if it was. Yeah. Okay, so so what's the best way to do this? Yeah. We, do you want to cover in a snapshot your version of what we covered in that first episode, and then we can talk about what has happened since? What has happened since? Yeah. And, and yeah. first of all, what's really important for me too, as well as, as I speak about this, is I speak from my experiences, right? And I'm not going to arm armchair quarterback the situation by any means, and definitely I'm not going to speak for the guys that are over there right now that've been fighting, right? That's that's their world. I'm not going to criticize that. I'm not going to critique it. Yeah. I'm just going to pass on the information I've had from former teammates. And uh, people I work with, people I know, that's not sort of such. So, sure. um, so we came here about a week after October 7th, after Hamas, a terrorist organization based out of the Gaza Strip, uh, launched a massacre on southern Israel, uh, killed 1,200 civilians, babies, uh, raped women, uh, tortured families, uh, and took over, at that time, we believed it was 200 hostages at the time. Of which some still remain, correct? About 120 plus. Yeah. Still there. Um, I lived in the southern, um, in a very southern community. Uh, about 12 people I knew were, were murdered that day. And uh, two, I, during that time period, were still missing. They, they've been, since been found dead. Um, so that happened. Israel had not invaded Gaza at that time. They had just been fighting a ground war to, to, to fight off the, the stragglers that were still within Israel's borders. And they were preparing to, uh, to launch the ground invasion that has now been nine months. Yeah. How do we capture that nine months? What are your thoughts? I mean, I'm assuming right. both you, Bernardo, are not here, yeah. but I'm assuming you're in communication with him. I would imagine there's communication that extends between the two of you, two people in yeah. Israel. Yeah. I mean, I'll let you unpack it kind of however you want to. Definitely. Bring so, us up to modern day. For sure. So, you know, I, I chose, I had, I'd been out of the military since 2017. So I last did the reserves. And there was a good wave of people that were going back. I made the decision that. I was going to stay, you know, I have a, I had a, a son that was about to be born. Um, I had not served in, you know, quite a few years and I felt it would be better for me to be home and to help the community here rather than go back. But I do know quite a few people that did. Uh, and then teammates that were still living in Israel, right? And uh, from what I'm getting, the last nine months have been ups and downs in ways that the first, the first few months were relatively not too difficult. Straightforward, per- likely in Connecticut. Yeah, for the most part. The latter part of the, the, the year has been very difficult. When it came down to tunnel work, they still have not been able to eliminate all the tunnels. Um, they've taken heavy casualties. Um, the influx of, of civilians in populated areas, even after they were evacuated, has been very difficult on the IDF to select, um, you know, to... to we call it collateral damage. You don't want to call it collateral damage. Civilian casualties. Trying to prevent civilian. Largely the yes. same term. Y- right. Used in the same way. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I, honestly, there's no. Right. Just shit. There's no. Just, yeah. People you don't want to kill. Yeah. Innocent yeah. people Innocent who are people in war zones stuck who are going to die. And, you know, at first Israel had gone in, you know, we're going to finish this. We're going to get our hostages. But that didn't happen. It was, there has been one hostage rescue mission, which I think has not been highlighted to the extent that it would have because of, of the rest of the lack of returning the hostages. But it was a very high-risk hostage rescue mission. They were able to rescue three hostages alive. But the vast the majority of the hostages um, were either killed or still in, ca- in captivity. Were there, do you know, when they went in to do that hostage rescue, were there only three that were there? Do I you believe have- so. Then they had intelligence for a while that they were there. Which is interesting because let's say they had 200, 120 remaining. That means they have part and parcel, which is smart from a tactical perspective. Mm -hmm. They are aggregating out and keeping the number of them small, which makes it difficult to target. But I tell you what, that also is logistically difficult for Hamas Mm -hmm. to track those people because there's a manpower issue associated with that as well. And the last the last that they rescued were actually staying with a family, with a wealthy Gaza family. Not under guard. No. Well, under guard, right? But in a civilian populace. 
in, you have that, and then you have many in tunnels. Yeah. And then you have many that have been killed. I mean, there's a th- four-month-year-old. I mean, he's pretty close to a year now, I believe, now, and a six-month-year-old. They have the, the world's youngest hostage right now is, is in Gaza. Hope, well, hopefully assuming that they're still alive. It's hopefully assuming they're still alive. In my Which, experience, probably not. Dealing with terrorist organizations, yeah. their value of life is a little bit different. It is. And the requirements to keep an infant alive, let alone thrive, are high. Right. It might cross their risk reward ratio. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So what do you, what have you heard that is making it so much more complex in the, call it, recent months? I don't want to speak to too much of it, but really the tunnel warfare. Yeah. Right? You're fighting an enemy that is not marked at all. They uh, are dressed in civilian civilian clothes. Uh, we, we have an extensive tunnel network that also runs into Egypt as well. Right? And, and Israel's not going to cross into Egypt. So the bad guy, you know, the bad guys could run across the border underneath and come back. How many years? How long have they been working on this tunnel system? This um, probably since uh, 2006 minimum. Because we what, so in, in what size tunnel are we talking here? We talk stand up straight tunnel. H- hundreds of miles, ups and downs, multiple. But levels. like stand up straight, we're not talking like you know, like a lot of the Mexican drug cartel tunnels are. Oh, we're just big like, enough. You're, no, talking we're talking like, like stand up straight, like bunkers. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay. oh, yes, like tunnel shafts. Like okay. So think about it. They've had millions. Michael, let's see if you can find an image yeah. of any of the tunnels in Gaza, please. IDF tunnel, Gaza tunnel review. I mean, they have had millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in construction equipment sent to them, and that works out really well to make good tunnels. You know, <laughs> uh, tunneling equipment will do that. Yeah. 2000. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're talking under hospitals. We're, we're, we're having tunnels. I mean, okay. Yeah. Like oh, legitimate tunnels. Go, go one to the left of that one. Yeah. Well, let's look at that first. All right. So shit. Okay. That's concrete reinforced in some sections. Yeah. We have, who knows what those cables are. Mm-hmm. Uh, go one more to the left of that too, Michael. So this one is bigger to circular in diameter. Holy cow. Yeah. That looks concrete reinforced as well. Okay, so oh damn, yeah, uh, that's gonna play a video. It's not like the image of like Vietnam where they're like yeah. in these little rat holes running through. With a so, with... yeah, do you have this up so the viewers can watch this too? Yes. Yeah. So that image we're looking at for people who are listening only, I'm gonna call that. It's a highlighted red spider web of uh, who knows the accuracy of that, but it's probably a representation of the complexity, breadth, and depth of the tunnel system. And that is a, that is a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, my initial thoughts would be garden hose, but that's a really big garden hose, you know? They had tried. They tried a garden hose? Well, they tried seawater. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So seawater seawater was implemented for sure. Uh, From what I heard, I don't know if this is true, but from what I've heard is they couldn't do that much of it because it would completely collapse Gaza. Because if you put water underneath the entire city, yeah, right, the, the entire network would be that compl- area that you, would one hundred percent do just, that. Yeah. yeah, but it had been used. That has, has definitely been used. That's confirmed. Pumps were brought. I mean, the seas right there. That's never going to run yeah. out. But again, it's like which tunnels do you flood? But you don't know if their hostages are there or not. Yeah, there, that's a that's an equation or a problem that doesn't have any easy solutions. No easy solutions. Yeah, right. it's not one plus one. As much as people would, because I've heard people say that. Why don't they just go in and get the hostages? And they will ask me to, to do a like a Friday right. episode With talking Fox about Fox and Friends or something like that. Uh, yeah, Fox and Friends had me come on one time. They wanted me to talk about the complexity of fighting in an urban environment. Yeah. And I think they stop asking me to do that stuff because I refuse to do anything other than tell the truth and give a an a answer that I consider to be safe based off my own personal knowledge. Yeah. They want a flashy answer, right? Oh, you know this, that, or the other. Here's my experience. Here's some challenges they could face. We're probably better off waiting for some more information to come out. Right. So. That's that's honestly where I'm at as well. It's yeah. just it sucked. You've had you have them come out from all all angles. Um, massive civilian casualties occur from this. Uh, one thing that is new is drone warfare. Yeah, is on both sides. Israel is implementing a lot more drones than they used to. It's actually in conventional infantry units now are using drones. Do they is... make their own, or do you guys go to DGI.com? I might be DGI.com. <laughs> honestly, from my experience in the army, I mean, it's cheap as bitter. Uh, they make some good shit. No, I mean, I do have a friend that actually had a GoFundMe for for drones for his unit. So okay. I'm sure. <laughs> I and, mean, have you seen some of the footage in Ukraine of these drones oh, chasing crazy. individuals and then dropping a, a grenade on them? them? Yeah, it's it's crazy. 
Yeah. But that's where we're at right now. It's kind of a crazy time. Oh, that is where we're, we're at right drone now. warfare. I believe a Ukrainian drone struck a – it was a couple hundred miles deep into Russia. I forget the exact piece of infrastructure. It might have been – power generation of some kind mm, hundreds of miles away autonomously flew there they I mean, raised it israel was hit two days ago by a uav from the houthis don't you guys have some high-speed sea we're cannons? supposed to have some of that <laughs> exactly no it got through iranian backed they are tiny. technology it got through it killed one person in tel aviv injured 10 yeah israel responded yesterday with a massive uh attack on the infrastructure in the houthi controlled area um that red sea yeah and uh yeah so one thing I've heard constantly, yeah. and this is not something that I experience or live through because right. I'm not Jewish, right. but since October, I have some Jewish friends, yeah. and they have expressed a very large rise in anti-Semitism. Yeah, tremendous. And I'm curious about your own personal experiences with that. For sure. Um, so I'm a little bit different. I grew up knowing that anti-Semitism was a part of my life. Just having a Holocaust surviving grandmother, we talked about this last podcast. I'm like, people are always going to want to kill me. It's okay. A little desensitized. It's not okay, but I'm a little desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. um, but a mass amount of Jewish people for the first time saw that they were going to be targeted for what people assumed was their political backing and for being Jewish, right? There's a lot of controversy with Israel. It's not perfect situation. I'll be the first person to say that. Um, but it has become a funnel to really just show anti-Semitism, as in we, we've had synagogues with swastikas put on them, and Frank memorials, Gaza swastika put on it. Uh, Anti-Israel is also anti-Semitism and vice versa, and we've seen that played out in the mainstreams. Um, Where do you think it comes from? <sighs> well, It is not something that I have experienced or seen happen in my own personal life. Right. I think it would terminate in me elbowing that person in the face. Just, right. I just, but and Jews and I, are starting to do that now. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to remove we'll the anti-Semitism portion right. from that. I don't tolerate bullies. Well, right. and that, so it, you could replace that term with a oh, racism or somebody abusing a child or a right. woman. I just, some, you know, it's easier, I guess, say somebody's God, I hate to say this, but it's, it's also true. Abuse often generationally passes on. Mm -hmm. So you see a husband yelling at their child because or a father yelling at a child or just being a fucking asshole because that's how they were treated. Right. So that's a little bit of a, a different issue because that's generational bullshit passing itself on, even though that person has right. the ability to stop it. Where do you think the anti-Semitism comes from? So as, let's, let's look to history. Um, historically, Jews have been scapegoats for thousands of years. And one of the uh, the big, uh, they would call them blood libels, uh, criticism against Jews and like the medieval. Blood libel? Uh, yeah. Uh, L-I-B-E. Yeah, 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 libels. Like, was that Jewish people killed Christian babies and they made their little matzah bread out of the Christian blood. Um, that's kind of like in our historic roots have been against Jewish people, right? The Jews just killed Christian. That's like the old wives' tales was thought. Uh, old wives' tale from who? That's the first time I've ever heard that. Um, medieval times is where it started. Okay. Uh, don't. I don't know the exact date or which country, but that's just a con that's one example, right? Okay. Uh, if you want to look down at the Bible, right, you want to say, hey, Moses killed the firstborn pharaohs, right? Maybe that's where it started in, in the biblical. A lot time. of people were killing people in the Yeah, but maybe times. it was translated and pointed at the Jews. So <laughs> what I'm saying, though, is if you look at it nowadays, you see the Jewish people, they just kill babies. They call them baby killers. Look what they're doing in Gaza. It's always the, the, the Jewish people are responsible for you know, the worst, most heinous things you could think of in the world. It's pointed out against them a lot. I don't know where it started. I'm thinking there. It started, you know, biblical times. But uh, it's, it's continued. And now there's been a medium for it to be to be expanded on. And also for ignorant people who see what these bad actors are, are talking and spreading and they come onto it because they think it's from a place of virtue. But really, it's just a funnel of hate. What are your thoughts on the uh, college protesters? It seemed to have died so, down. So it has died down a lot, right? I think, I mean, they're out for summer break, right? So it's like, hey, man, I'm not in school, so I'm going to go home. How but, many of them do you think actually believe or understand? That's the thing. I don't think a lot of them understand the complex. Like I've always said very happily, like I will, if there is a Palestinian out there, he's probably closer culturally to me than he is to the average American. I'll have a, we probably disagree on many things, but I'll have a civil discussion with them. I don't deny their right to existence at all. Um, but there's plenty of people that have no connection at all to the conflict and deny my or my people's right to existence in our land as well. Um, 
I mean, we saw we saw the congressional testimony about is it okay to call for the the the, the death of Jewish people? It got to that level on a, on a main stage as long as it's not threatening or whatever they said. Yeah. Um, is it okay? I don't think an argument. I don't think that's the argument. Is it protected under the First Amendment? Definitely. Yeah, it I is. I think that's the argument, and it is. It is. And that sucks, but that's also the importance of the First Amendment. And I try to remind right. people, because people always want to say, I can say whatever the fuck I want to because of the pers- First Amendment. And I say to them, you're correct, but at least in my opinion, my individual opinion, the First Amendment is more about what I have to tolerate other people saying. Definitely. I mean, there's a famous story of, of, of a Jewish lawyer defending the Ku Klux Klan's right to yeah. protest. The ACLU, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, that, that's, and I believe in that wholeheartedly. But should our funds go to sponsor schools that facilitate that? There was a, what shall we use as a term? Swift backlash from mm-hmm. donors, it seems. There were. There was. <laughs> there, there, there definitely was. And hence, we don't see it yeah. quite as much. I believe as I heard the talk. sound of the breaks from the right. checks. Yeah. Very fast. <laughs> and a few resignations later, and yeah. that was that. But honestly, though, like, you know, I work with an organization called McGinnom in, um, in Los Angeles, California, and in that whole area. What they do is they, they're pr- pretty much a, a protection agency run by the community. So they go through the entire licensing uh, processing to become licensed security guards in in the California greater area. They go through de-escalation training, combative training, firearms training, the whole whole owners. And they pretty much are a community patrol. They work with the local law enforcement. They're seeing protests for religious Jews. Let's let's back a phrase a little bit. So Friday night to Saturday night, Religious Jews, they don't drive their cars, they don't use electronics, they don't play loud music. It's the it's a, it's a Sabbath, right? Um, it's time of peace for them, time of worship. They're seeing proposed protests of loud protesters coming through, blasting blow horns, blasting trucks, intimidating them on their day of rest, on, on, their, on their holy days. Mm-hmm. Just inciting, pushing them to violence to an extent in many ways. This is something they're seeing daily. Is that a peaceful protest? I don't see that at all. By any means. That's just incitement. I think it would depend on the eye of the beholder. And then again, you get down to, and I'm not justifying right, no, it. No, I'm not arguing for it. I'm just trying to think, you know, it, pushing somebody to the point, uh, irritating them to the point where they become violent, I think is different than incite. Well, I mean, again, it I'm not saying down, they're acting on violence. I'm just saying that seems to be the intention. Yeah, you know. They're baiting them. Yeah, but the engagement in it, is a choice. And I'm not saying sure. what they're doing on those days of rest should be done either. Right. And they're not doing it accidentally on those days, no. right? Like, let's have an honest conversation right. about what's going on on both sides of the coin here. God, I wish people had harder lives. Yeah. I mean, they do a lot better things on a Saturday. I wish sometimes that we still had to have plows and horses. Or national service. Well, if we had plows and horses and you were responsible for your own fruits and vegetables and food. I see what you're saying. There'd be no protesting on right. Friday and Cause Saturday because you'd, to... you'd be working the fucking right. field. Right. right. <laughs> Not Michael. Right. He. What do you think his job would be? My initial no. thought is seamstress. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's That's literally hands. the first thought. Yeah, let's see your hands, Michael. They're girlish. Yeah. I have I have dainty hands. They're, totally. They're, definitely yeah. could thread a needle. Yeah. <laughs> You're familiar with the SIG 365, right? Yeah. It's an oversized handgun for yeah, him. Definitely. <laughs> I uh, got I have the no macro. XL for him. Yeah. Yeah. Standard original. There's no, first off, Michael, there's nothing you have that's macro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not a okay, fucking thing. But it's just, what, no. my first thought is no. seamstress. What what you look at Michael, what would he have done? <clears throat> Concubine, perhaps? College student, <laughs> eunuch, yeah, jester, now Jean bottle, <laughs> yeah. Surf I'd be bomb. a jester. Be fun. I could see that too. I can too. Yeah, yeah. his uh, brothers Gingery. are funnier than him. Really? Is he the eldest of yes. the Sheltai? Yeah, he has four brothers. Oh wow! I finally met them. And you're not all. LDS. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I finally met them all at a wedding. Dude. Really? There's a yeah. mall here. There's a what? A mall here? No, at a wedding. Oh, at a wedding. Yes. They oh. were all, his brother was emceeing the wedding. That's cute. While <laughs> up giving a speech, he was playing Pokemon on his phone. Bar Mitzvah DJ. <laughs> I was... That he, Your brother might have actually nailed it at a Bar Mitzvah. I don't know shit about a Bar yeah. Mitzvah other than what it is, but yeah. he probably could have been at least the MC. Yeah. His right. brother's up there crushing the crowd, working the crowd. Love it. 
fucking Michael is playing Pokemon <laughs> under the table. And he denied it at first. Was I was at the under table. Under the table? Next- no, I never denied it. Fuck you. I never denied we'll it. We'll pull up the Is this like, recent years? So I'm like, over here. I'm off his left shoulder. Yeah. And I look over, <laughs> and he's down here just... And, I, and in my mind, I was thinking, one, I'm going to call you out on this shit. And two, I need to take a picture so you can't deny right. it. And I didn't take the picture. Is this like a Pokemon Go? It. I've heard of that. No, it's it's actual Pokemon, uh, like the old games. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, how old I was are you? still listening. Exactly. I'm 24. Okay. Okay. So. I'm still listening. Okay. That. I was. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, he was listening for was either people laughing or clapping. Got it. Because they I would clap, that. and and so here's here's Michael when if somebody started clapping, he'd be down here, he'd hear clapping. In the right. <laughs> you know why he's laughing so hard? Because he's fucking busted. True. <laughs> I, no, I I knew I was doing it. I assumed people saw me. You assumed in the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't with him. You know, he doesn't know. Rule Where'd you one. find him? <sighs> Jiu-jitsu. Oh, okay. He doesn't know rule one of when you're in a hole that you should probably hide the shovel because he it. will just start hucking dirt <laughs> over the top of. At least he's side. honest. <laughs> yeah. No, he did. Yeah, it was jujitsu. What you were a white belt when we met? Yes. <clears throat> Are you yeah. a strong purple belt at this point? He's a strong. He's very strong. Technically, very very strong. Awesome. A purple yeah. belt? Did I guess it right? Yeah, he's a purple belt. Yeah, I just saw it. I knew it. I knew it. When did you get a purple belt? A year ago? Year and a half? Uh, last summer. Last summer. Yeah. Okay, so about just a year. Over a year. Yeah, yeah that's year awesome. Ago. No, very technically proficient purple belt. Uh, yeah. SBG. I don't feel yeah. like that a lot cool. of the time. Well, who are you rolling with? People that are better than me. <laughs> You know, I've heard recently, mm-hmm. and I'm curious your thoughts on this, even though you're not deep into the jiu-jitsu world, a lot of high-level coaches, and maybe this is just an example, of, I swear, I don't know, people talk about algorithms. Right. I think a lot of time there's just chance, but I'll see a video, and the next thing you know, I'll see three or four videos that mm-hmm. are similar. A lot of high-level coaches are saying, don't spend a lot of time rolling with people better than you. I can 80, see that. 80-20. 80, though, being people that you are better than them. You're not yeah, I could see that because then you can work what you're good at already exactly. and yeah. really perfect that. And then 20% gets smashed? Right. Yeah. And yeah. But the, the other school of thought is 100% of the time pursue people that are better than you, but then it, maybe you're fighting for survival. I think that's a bad idea because um, then you never get to work your exactly. game. If you yeah. look at boxers when they come up, they always give them matches that they're some of they're slightly better at until they're ready for prime time. Yeah. You know, so they could practice their moves. They could refine their skills. Polishing they, yeah, polish it up, right? Yeah. And in sparring, they'll bring in the heavyweights for every once in a while, beat them up. You'll learn some things. Yeah. But as they take in fights and spar more, they're going to polish. Like, so There's those days where you need to drive home with the radio off. There you go. Exactly. Questioning life choices. Oh. You ever have those days, Michael? Yeah. 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 Those days. <laughs> Like, why do I... I had a long drive. Do thing. I... Yeah. Do I even like this? Yeah. Why do I even do this? Right. And that's how you get through it. What time is class tomorrow? <laughs> God. Yeah, we're off on a tangent. We're getting side... We're getting a little bit... What the hell are we talking about? We were talking about anti semitism in America. How have you experienced it have experienced in your own it. personal life since that time? Well, again, I'm a little bit different because I'm pretty desensitized, right, um, to it. Just just because the way I, just cause the way I grew up, frankly, honestly. But what I have seen is I've seen Jewish people afraid. I've seen protests outside of their houses. I've seen swastikas uh, mixed with, with um, Megan David's, right? Um, I don't know what that is. A swastika? Or, no, Megan David. Uh, sorry, in, in English, uh, Megan David. Shield of, uh, David Shield, uh, the Jewish star. Got you. Okay. Um, that's, that's really alarming for a lot of Jewish people when he makes a swastika and a star of David. Um, the word Zionist is thrown out there a lot. Uh, these are Israel is composed of white Zionist um, overlords. Michael, and, what is the technical definition of a Zionist? Right. Let's talk about this. It's always better just to pull up to straight black and white. Sometimes Zionism is a political movement that aims to create a Jewish state in Israel and protect the Jewish nation. The name comes from the Hebrew word Zion, which refers to Jerusalem. Zionism's core beliefs include Judaism is both a religion and a nationality. 
Jews are one nation, not just an ethnic or religious community. Jews deserve their own state in their ancestral homeland. The only solution, only solution to anti-Semitism is to concentrate as many Jews as possible in Palestine, Israel. Is that the definition as you understand it? Yeah. Okay. So the the I the, the way I, I understand Zionism, I believe it, that I believe in Zionism. Is Zionism the belief of a Jewish independent state. That doesn't mean there's not a Palestinian state. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean there's not a right for Arabs, Muslims, Druze, Ethiopians, you know, Africans plethora of different people to live in the land of Israel. It just means that the Jewish people should have a right to live in their ethnic land and have a state. Okay. That's it. How do other people use that term? As a white supremacy. Uh, Interesting. Constantly. You know, it, it, we've almost lost that word. I'm, I, 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 in many ways, feel hesitant to say that out here. It's just, I, you know, I don't know if I want to go down that route of, of being labeled a Zionist, but fuck, screw it, I'm going to go for it. Um, and that's just the belief that we have the right to exist in our own state. Yeah. I, uh, what, what will happen is people will argue about right. what it means. Right. What and it they'll means, disagree exactly. with you because they hold a different opinion. Of Definitely. What and that's fine. Yeah. That's fine for sure. But it but it has been so farly moved to Nazism and to white supremacy kind of in this polarized. Nazism is, I cannot fucking believe that in, it, it is a term that has applied. I've heard it applied to right. Trump, mm -hmm. uh, people who fall on the right hand side of the political aisle. Yep. I think we should be clear about what Nazis are slash were. I don't think the ideology has died, right? Because there are people who they're real Nazis out there. They're I've seen them. I've met them. I've been to dinner with them. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're going to need to tell that story. I, I can't. We'll, we'll have to talk off camera about that. <sighs> what if talk was, to Ed Calderon? What if it was in a hypothetical? Yeah, actually, we have to cut that too. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, <laughs> okay, okay, um, yeah. But it's not. No, but they're real. They're of course they're real. Yeah. Because an ideology, right. I don't think Doesn't you could die. ever you truly it. tamp it out. Mm -mm. Can you destroy its military capability? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll point you back towards 1944. Right. It can 100% be smashed from its ability to influence the rest of the world writ large. Can you stop some of them from fleeing to Argentina? No. Oh. Can you stop some of that? I mean, look at what happened to the San Bernardino shooters. They never right. even went and interfaced with somebody that were was or is a terrorist. They were interfacing with it on the internet. Right. So the information, if it has the ability to be passed forward, of course those things have the ability to survive. Mm. But if a Nazi is fucking everything that you don't agree with, then it doesn't mean anything. And I don't understand why people can't grasp that concept. Yeah. Is a Nazi the dude in the gray uniform or the political candidate that you don't like? Is the Nazi your neighbor because he has a political sign that you can't stand, which by the way, go onto YouTube and look up people who are electrifying there, I the saw that Trump sign. <laughs> Phenomenal. Phenomenal. There, it's Love it. Just the initial reaction. Yep. I don't want anybody to get hurt, right. but it is. But those people sometimes use the term Nazi. And right. if a not, it's the same as any it's term in the modern vernacular. So loosely thrown out. Well, if it applies to everything. Right. It actually applies to nothing. And then it loses all its value. And all of its weight behind it. Correct. I mean, like at the end of the day, like I, I am the descendant of Nazi survivors. My grandmother was taken to concentration camp at 14. She escaped that concentration camp. Her father was medically experimented on where he had a, a uh, I think his left, his left leg was amputated without anesthesia for a pain, a pain experiment. I'm going to feel like that experiment was successful and there was pain. There probably was just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that's my lineage. Why, why do we need to experiment, experiment on that? I mean, there's a lot of fucked up shit the Nazis did back then. I completely agree. To yeah. <laughs> I mean, the pressure, cha like pre they put people in pressure chamber. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know it all. The United but States Navy does that too they sometimes. Do. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but I think there's Where do you think the dive tables come from? Right. There you go. <laughs> hey, you're going to learn some way. Right? The um, dive tables are legitimately built off of people being bent. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think they got chambered right afterwards and got, you know, medical yeah. attention, but they found the limits by exploring the regions beyond them. Mm. <laughs> American military. Fuck. Love it. That's <laughs> some experiments. Some they, volunteers, they, some are voluntold. Yep. That's how it is. I yeah. mean, yeah, it's like that, but yeah. no, I mean, so I'm, my lineage is, is surviving that generational trauma. I had a pretty different childhood because of that. Right. My mother definitely had a different childhood behind because of that. And when you go ahead and call me a Nazi, because I believe that I could live in, in a, a, a land of, of my people. It's a really weird it's full weird. circle. It's really weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So. How, 
how do you try to help other people deal with that? What is your advice to people who are experiencing this? Firstly, security first. So a lot of times people come to us, myself, other people in the know, other Jews. There's kind of a community of us that come from defensive backgrounds and know some things. And some people, um, it's like, you're probably going to be all right from a safety perspective. You are. But let's make sure that we ensure that, right? So we've done everything from fortifying um, Jewish houses, um, preventing them from like putting a glass film over them, mm -hmm. gates, that sort of work, gone into training, right? Making sure they're more aware about their situational awareness, combatives, properly firearms. So far, I like this for everybody. Yeah, 100%. Being yeah. be self-sustained, where you can take care of yourself. Yeah. So allowing them to have the means to take care of themselves. And also, give themselves an outlet to talk about it. It's okay. You can go ahead and call another Jewish friend and say, hey, I'm, I'm dealing with this. I've never dealt with this before. I'm thinking about voting differently right now for the first time. Say, so go for it. Be that change that you think that your community needs to have. Traditionally, which direction does the Jewish community go? Traditionally, left-leaning. Okay. In, especially on the East Coast. Okay. It is turning tremendously fast. You probably, did you watch the RNC? No. Well, there is, a, you could tell they're really leaning into the Jewish votes. How so? They had, I mean, rightfully so. We love it. They, they had um, parents of hostages on stage. They had a Jewish um, college student that was suing Harvard as well on stage. And they had a whole second kind of dedicated to bring back the hostages and strong Israel supporting it. Um, and also combating the anti-Semitism that they saw on college campuses. So they leaned into that. Mm. It's a tough platform to run on bringing the hostages home. Yeah. Because that's still a tactical problem. But that doesn't also just mean a lie. We just want them home. Yeah, that's tough to wrap your head around, but I understand that. You know, that's the thing. Is like I Still mean, terminates in a really, really difficult tactical situation. 100%. I, 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 and I... I wish politicians wouldn't campaign and make those things so right. like they're binary. If I'm elected, these people are all coming home because you and I know people right. who will be tasked with making that happen. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. I mean, it's anything but easy. It can be some of the most complex and dangerous shit on the face of the earth. I mean, we have a, a soldier from 2014. His body's been in Gaza since 2014, since an engagement there. We're still trying to get him back. Where's his body? We don't know. It's in Gaza. They hold on. I mean, there's there's bodies that have been there for. Will they bury them, or what do they traditionally do with depends. the bodies? They'll either bury them, or they'll keep that location under lock and key until you know you give them something. Like Israel will give trade prisoners for bodies. Very yeah. often, this will happen. Um, bodies don't look that good after years. No, but really, what it comes down to is you're making the family whole. Yeah, exactly. And in, in, in Jewish religion, you have to have the body back mm -hmm. and you have to bury it properly. Like there is actually, and this is the people that after the, the attacks, these really barbaric attacks, they have this group called Zaka, which is they're in charge of bringing any little piece of blood. Every, every piece. Israel has a group called Zaka. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Israel Jews just do in general. Okay. When, when a body has to pass over and be buried, you want to gather as much of it as possible. And so they had to go through all these different communities and, collect every single drop of blood, whatever they could, whatever they could salvage. And there's some still working with archaeological equipment to try and get those bones and those pieces, those fragments back. Um, so that's just part of the Jewish religion. What is a traditional um, burial ceremony look like? Do you, uh, is it, do you have a choice between cremation? Is it mostly so burial? So Israel's whole. You want as much of the body as possible. Okay. So and it uh, is buried? Yes. Okay. In, in Israel, uh, particularly, it's without a, um, without a uh, coffin. Just a sheet or a prayer, a prayer. Uh, okay. Um, I don't even know. Pr prayer scarf. Like I was involved in an incident. Somebody passed away. The next day, I buried him. Okay. Which was pretty wild to be part of a critical incident. Next day, you're carrying the guy. Cremation, to not an option. No, okay. No. You want you want a whole body. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's the process, right? So you know, they're they're still fighting to get bodies from you know 10, 15 years ago. <sighs> Conceptually, I yeah. understand that desire. Man. Right. From that. From tactical practical, 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 practical perspective, yeah, it's different. Not my scale to balance the, the yeah. between the two. Why do you? Uh, why did uh, Jewish people traditionally vote left versus right? I honestly, I, I don't. I don't know. I know there was a lot of Jewish politicians that were like Kissinger and others that were pull that mic Democrat. toward you. They were democratic. Okay. So is there any that. particular uh, policy on the left that Jewish people align with more than 
on the right? No, and I think they're coming to realize that. Okay, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately no, asking sure. this because uh, I don't. And yeah. this is my of my yeah. opinion, right? Again, disclaimer out there because you know I'm, I'm a little, I'm kind of a PC guy. I know you're not a PC guy, but I, I try and I'm super know, PC. What the fuck uh, are you talking fucking about? PC, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you're a you piece know, of again, shit, Michael. That's gosh, how PC that I am. Hostile environment again. <laughs> Makes my HR rep give me like. Give me those jitters. But, um, I no. never have any problems for my HR rep because yeah, it's you me. You don't have one. <laughs> yeah, it's you. He can complain to me anytime he, he wants, and he, he constantly could. does. I'm sure. But it um, goes right in the trash. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Jewish people to tend to be more fiscally conservative, right? Okay. That seems a little bit more to the right. We tend to support Israel, right? Also seems to be more to the right. Um, I kind of don't understand why they are always voting for the Democrat. I mean, for the left, traditionally, hmm. in my opinion. I have almost no knowledge on the subject, so I couldn't yeah. tell you. Population or area. From, yeah. from, like New York has one of the third highest, I think it's like the third or fourth highest Jewish population in the world. New York's historically democratic. Uh, Los Angeles as well. <sighs> I'm going to be honest with you. It pisses me off sometimes when B&H photo doesn't take my order on Friday. Okay. B&H photo. What's B&H photo? It is the largest goddamn electronic supply store on earth and they shut Are it they down. Are they Jewish? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I was like, gosh, man, I need to get back on my global conspiracies. Like they really own all that? Well, they own that particular business and it is unbelievable. I was in New York not too long ago uh-huh. and I finally got to go to the store. Oh, you said Fridays are like, not like Chick-fil-A on Sundays. Yeah. Oh. They're, no, no it's like, well, we, your order's in the queue and it'll get processed on Either Monday or Sunday. What do they? What do you? You get like camera equipment from them? Yeah, that's where I got the new camera. How dare they? You want me to make some phone calls? No, I do not. I want to respect people's ability to take some days off. All right, except for Michael. None. Except for Michael. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He will be available to receive my commentary. So they're called BH photos. B and H. B and I wonder if that's for Baruch Hashem. So Baruch Hashem means bless God. I don't know. Could you look up Michael? Isn't it nice actually having somebody in front of an internet? Yeah. Sorry, this is great. I might. I need this in my life. Um, They are by. Okay. I was just about to say the largest phot- photography business in the world. Really? I don't have a fucking clue if that's true. Right. Their store that's why the Jews has got to be media. three or four stores. No, it's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, like, I no, love for it. Sure. And then they have a fulfillment warehouse completely unassociated from the store. Mm-hmm. What did you find so far, Michael? Uh, I just found their website, but it doesn't <clears throat> say if that. Say, like Google, what does B&H stand for in B&H and yeah, H photo? Uh. Pull it up. Blimey Schreiber. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not what I thought or I assumed. 100% not. I mean, I crazy it. assumption. Crazy name. If you look Those at my arms, so... I am not the most religious Jew in the yeah, world. Peach comes from the initials of the stores. Oh, it's okay. So it's from the original owners. Okay. Because religious. Blimey Schreiber and her husband, Herman. Okay. There religious Jews say BH a lot, which means Baruch Hashem, like bless God. Oh, it's oh, a praise abbreviation. God. Yeah. Okay. Just, I don't know. But again. Do you ever go to New York? Not really. Are you into camera equipment at all? Maybe I'm going to be. Should I go there? I'm working on that. I spent hours in there. Is it? I don't know anything about cameras. Yeah. Fascinated by the shit that's in there. You, can you get stuff? Still photography. And you, and order, video photography. And you order it though, right? They, you, you don't order buy it there. And they're shipping. Uh, you can do both. Okay. Because I'm Oregon. We don't have sales tax. So. Their shipping is ungodly fast. Phenomenal. So good. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll talk offline. I, I'm looking to somewhat get into photography. Okay. Yeah. They would be, I don't know what camera to even recommend right. for you. Just like basic YouTubing work. Well, they would have the answer to the phenomenal practical usage of that. Love it. Yeah. Love it. All right. So we were talking about physical security. You're talking about the uh, the things that you have worked with people on the right. security we're, Physical first. security, right? And yeah. then having leaning into your community. Like that's all I could do during, after October 7th, right? It was like, I wasn't going back to Israel. I was going to go lose my job and not be there for the birth of my son, mm-hmm. which has been crazy, by the way. Um, How old awesome. is he now? He is six months. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Not your first kid though, right? It is my first kid. You don't even know what's coming. I don't know. I mean, I want another one, but it's like, how could I love another one more than this one? Like, this is my kid. It doesn't work like that. This is my prince. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. We'll see. Don't, uh, don't let him know that he's your prince. Well, he, he, yeah, I won't. (laughs) I'll just call him Prince until he's like three. I have concerns. And then after that, yeah. I have concerns. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be really coddled. It, um, Way too coddled. I remember, so my oldest is two years older than her, his brother. Yeah. There's no There's no separation of your love when you add I'm another sure. one. No, I know. Yeah. 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 I get yeah. what you're saying, though. Yeah, I know. I just like, that's like, like I could I, never love something more. Yeah, and then there's I'm another one. Shit. And then you just say the same thing, but it becomes plural. And you have three kids? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. 
Is it though? Yeah, I think Do you so. Hang out are you happy? for a bit? I don't know how old are they. Fuck you up. How old are they? Sixteen, almost nineteen, and almost twenty-one. Oh, jeez. So you still have them in the house? Uh, my middle son lives with my wife and I. He leaves for college in uh, three days under a month. Nice. My daughter lives with my ex-wife, and uh-huh. my oldest son has an apartment with his girlfriend. Okay. Huge first step. Phenomenal. Yeah, but I I recommend for people if they want to have kids. Yeah. I will rent them mine for a weekend, and they will. It's the best birth control. What was your fa- What was your favorite age? I have enjoyed it all along the way. Yeah, I found it challenging when they were super young because yeah. their need for me was almost non-existent. Right. From a were you deployed a lot during that time period? Yeah, yeah, but not. I mean, I've never missed Christmas, Thanksgiving, holidays. I've missed some birthdays, but I was also I was, I was deployed a lot, but I was home a lot too. Right. What I mean is, uh, all three of my kids were breastfed. I can't really help with that. Like you can yeah, bottle and all those sure. things, but they needed their mom from a life perspective, like living perspective more yeah. than they needed me. Um, but every age has been cool, whether it's yeah. they're just figuring out how to crawl, walk, run, to talk, to be able to play with. Yeah. At first, you're not going to be able to do complex things with them. And then one day they're going to say to you, dad, we should get dirt bikes. That's what I'm waiting for. And then that you day. say, go get the fucking truck. And also say that in front of mom before we leave and make it sound like it was your idea. And then say, <laughs> daddy needs a KTM 450. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but it goes from, you know, sports to they're going to figure out that you'll see the growth of their social circle right. and the influence that the sh- social circle has. Then they're going to find the other sex or the yeah. same sex, depending on how they end up. Wherever growing. they go. Yeah. I get one all the way. Cars. Yeah. High school. Dreams for the future. Yeah. Being able to do cool things like travel and explore and appreciate new areas, new experiences, complex conversations about life, mm-hmm. relationships, money, politics. It's the coolest shit ever. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. And every one of the fucking gray hairs on my head, of yeah. which is almost all of them, are caused by my children. I've had about four pop ups since I've had him. Give it time. It was literally just when he when yeah. he was born. It comes out. Just hope that he they he He's slash a they. No, I mean if you have more. <laughs> right. I mean that in the plural. Yeah. Um don't you know, everybody worries about uh drugs, sex, alcohol. Mm-hmm. Here's your best hope that it all doesn't happen at once. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good combo. <laughs> that's like a wild night, nope. That is your best bet. Yeah, that's that's a good, that's a good call. Yeah, good call. No, it's amazing. But, but great. don't worry about having more. Yeah, check with your wife first, though. You know, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. I mean, they she got jacked up, like C section. The surgeon's like, yeah. that was the hardest C section of my life. Can you imagine carrying a child? Yeah, and they <sighs> they cut you like a fish, and they pull it out. I'm not an expert in how fish are taken care of, but I don't think it's you the don't same, go, you sir. don't you don't go fishing. Uh, You're not, you don't go hiking. I have been fishing many you, times. My okay. point is, I don't think the procedure for gutting a fish is a C-section. Similar. I it's don't a, it's a cut, a downward cut. No, it's horizontal, dude. They did down. On her, they did it down. No, they did her. You're right. Yeah. Horizontal. Yeah, not my first But they did it across, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm out here debating, like, how C-sections I'm thinking ahead of me. I guess that's possible. I don't know. No, no, I, I know that, like, like, her C-section, the surgeon was like, this is the hardest one I've ever done. Yeah. And so she was just jacked up. So well, we'll you're see. through the abdominal wall. Yeah, the, no. the long-term consequences are real for sure. He was a big baby. He was up all in her ribs. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's 22 pounds right now, six months. What are her thoughts on more kids? Oh, she wants them. We, we both want like three. Three is difficult. I'll yeah. tell you why. Two is man-to-man defense. Mm, three, you switch to zone. Mm. And they will never outwardly say it, but I think they secretly Bluetooth connect. And I'm they sure. know that if one goes left yeah. and one goes right... Fullback dive is ready. Love it. <laughs> it's rough. Dude. Bunch of little it's rough running around because they know. Yeah, like one of us is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> one of us going going to make it. Yeah. I love it. No, kids are the best. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm glad yeah. that I had children when I was younger because I can still experience a lot of the things I want to do with them in my super advanced old age. I'll, so, be, I'll be on social security very soon. So I'm a little bit older, and I just had my first one. But that's how old are you? Thirty four. Oh, you'd be all right. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? As long as I stay in shape, stay young, You'll be take early care of my skin. 50s, they'll be yeah. 20 something years. Exactly. Yeah. I'm still good to go. So I mean, my dad had me at 47. That was kind of a trip. So, Is he still alive? No. How was, how was that growing up 
with a father that was older right. like that. It was difficult for sure. Yeah, it was. De- it was definitely. You could difficult. tell that. It, you could tell di- that he was older. He was yeah. tired. You know, he had already had a life before. He had my my, my mom. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. That it sucks because you know they don't love you any less, but right. age they just time. can't, right? Age Especially and time is real. Listen, there are some forty-seven-year-olds that have kids now that are in shape, better shape than I am, yeah. and, right? And like they have kids and they make it work. They're older parents I know out there, but you know, also different times back then. People were not in the same shape they are now. They don't age the same. Medicine wasn't different, but it, it was, it was tough for sure. Um, but hey, I had a dad. I had a dad for 34, 30, 32 years. So at the yeah. end of the day, that's better than a lot of people have. Yeah, some people have a a dad or a father only in perspective of biology of nothing right. else. Exactly. So, so yeah. you can't complain. Um, we, you, we were talking again, you know, we're just talking about anti-Semitism. You're yeah. talking about being involved with your community. Yeah. Help, help the community out there. Really if you were a betting man, yeah. where does this take us? Do you think that the, the tide is going to erode on the anti-Semitism? No. Do you think that so? If it does march forward, where does that where does that take I us? I still think we're really fortunate to live in America. My my, I have friends that are, are in England, and Europe, and they're massive protests against Jewish people, openly calling for destruction of Israel and Jews. I mean, that happens in America, but we're talking. But guess what? They don't have the Second Amendment in England. They don't they have do not. the Knife Amendment in England. They have their fists, they have their words, and that's yeah. it. Um, so that's a different story. But what do you think it leads? I see the Jewish vote going to more conservative. I feel they're going to work to try and elect officials that will secure, secure their community. But they're, again, they're a very small voting demographic. And um, more Jews are learning to take care of themselves, protect themselves, learn how to fight. There's more Jews out there that are just saying, hey, we're here. Come and take it. Um, I don't know why anybody has to do that. And I'm not saying I'm not pointing that statement towards... Jewish people, what I'm what I'm saying or what I mean when I say mm-hmm. that is it sucks that any group has to plant their flag in the ground like that and mm-hmm. we can't one of the dumbest bumper stickers that I think exists right. is coexist. Yeah. Yeah. This which is generally attached to a Prius. Right. Which, Usually. Whatever. I'm not judging. With all the different symbols. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly that the bumper sticker. I hate that fucking bumper sticker, but yeah. I, I do appreciate the sentiment. Right. I wish that it wasn't like that. Right. But it, that's the reality of the world. I mean, tribes yeah. have always fought. I, I think. Well, they're never going to stop fighting. Either. No, I think I encourage all communities to learn how to defend themselves. We go right back to what we open with violence. I they, think you everybody should, be, should learn violence. Jordan Peterson nailed it. Mm-hmm. Somebody who is nonviolent, right, is not a you know that's not honorable. It just means you're harmless, right. And when somebody comes to take your shit, they're going to take your shit and kill you and your family. <laughs> Unless somebody else who's it's, really good at violence shows yeah, up, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what the, that's the reality of the world. When, yeah. hasn't, when has it ever been different? There's never been a utopian society where another tribe can try and take something from a different tribe. I don't them. think it, there will ever be. There never will be. Yeah. So that's what I do. Community. Lean into your community. That's what I preach. Where'd the uh, desire for these ultra marathons come from? Where'd you get that yeah. wild hair up your ass? So in college, I used to run. I was a crazy vegan hippie runner. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I was just dumb. Did you grow up vegan? No. What no. flipped you over to going vegan? Um, what, what did flip? I read a book called Born to Run, and they talked about this high carb diet and just a bunch of stupid stuff. And then a few trips. You can go high carb without going vegan. Yeah, I know. I was just I was just stupid. Right? Okay. And, I, and I was also into running barefoot too. I went down a really like crazy on hard surfaces. Or yeah, sand? hard hard surfaces, and then I moved to sandals and was running in sandals for a while like yeah. that. And I and I got into it, and um, yeah, uh, became pretty pretty good. You know, I'd run a few marathons here and there. Pick up. I'd run from. One one city to another to visit my girlfriend who's now my wife at the time. That's what was my form of transportation was running. Kind of weird times, like going to college. Do- I don't know if it was weird times. I think you were making weird choices. I was making some weird choices. <laughs> it was, I mean, isn't that what people do in college? They make some weird choices. They experiment I had a little bit. In college, I have, no you know, like one second, like community college. You have probably have like one. Okay, that's cool. No, that's smart. None. Yeah. Academics were not my strong suit. Yeah, I was the same way in high school. In college, I was kind of paying for. So I was like, I'm going to do really pay good a little this bit shit. more attention. Yeah, I paid a yeah. lot of I was like 25 though. But when though in that did you decide meat is bad? So it was never an ethical thing. Okay. I, I from a health perspective, I'm like, yeah, I need to not eat meat. I need carbohydrates to fuel my running. Yeah. Um, How'd that make you feel? It made me feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you stay with it? Two years. I got down to 160 pounds. What was the first meat item that a you turkey had? I killed? Okay. I was thinking you were going to say like. 
bacon on no, a burger. No, I, I don't like bacon. It's not a Jew thing. I just don't like bacon. Okay. What about a burger then? I love burgers. Steak, ribeye? Uh, every day. Okay. <laughs> okay. Every day. How quickly did you start feeling better? Phenomenally. Like after <laughs> after a day, like done. I ate the, I went turkey hunting, killed the turkey, I boiled it in water. Did you and feel it coursing sh- through your veins? The protein, yeah. It was, it was awesome. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, and so it was delicious. I moved, so stopped being vegan, put on a little bit of weight, moved back to America and got fat. Like really fat. Because America, like we're the only country in the world where there's a drive-through that I know of. I've been to quite a few countries. Have you seen drive-throughs outside of America? Oh yeah, where? France, Italy, okay. uh, a lot of Europe. Really? Specifically, yeah. Well, I guess I have a limited reach. Um, yeah. Actually, you know what? I Iceland. I'm wrong. In South Africa, there was drive-throughs. There was yes, there was a lot of drive-throughs. Yeah, I'm. I am wrong on this, on my assumption. Pretty aggressively, but yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll own it. Anyways, I moved back to America. got fucking fat because it was, you know, why not America? I was working a lot. Just moved here. So for clarity, server. yeah, that's that's called a personal choice, not the drive through It was a drive through I'm going to blame it on the drive through yeah, No, it was very, a personal that's choice. That's very extreme ownership of you. Yes. I blame it on the fucking drive through yeah. Anyways, became like 260. So I went from like 160 to like 260. You weighed 260 Yeah, pounds. I know. How tall are you? 5'8". <sighs> Man, you were shaped like a pear. Yeah. 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 And I, I was like, you know what? I'm the same weight. I'm four pounds from a UFC cutoff for heavyweight. It's 264, I think. And or 265. You're the height. No, you're the height. Nowhere <laughs> muscular build. <laughs> so I was like, no, this is not good. That's uh, like Francis and Ganu. Exactly. That's that was exactly what I half. thought. But cut in half. Vertically. Short Jewish kid, 260. And yeah, like I'm not a small guy, but like, yeah, I'm not a 260 dude. What did that feel like walking around at 260? You know, I still, it was, it was pretty bad. I still was able to be at like, quote unquote, athletic, work out five days a week, move, do some, you know, basic workouts, but it was, it was all diet. How was the path out of that? Well, it was difficult, but it was great. So it started with me deciding to run a marathon with four, four days of training. Okay. So I did that. Very David Goggins. It was, yeah. Do you know Goggins? Not personally. No, yeah, I don't know. We've crossed either. paths a few times, but he I don't seems know. like a cool guy. Actually, I like a lot of the shit. People give him a lot of shit. I think, like, honestly, he's motivating people every day. Yeah. Why the fuck not? Like, go for it. I'll be the first person to give him credit for the motivation that he has yeah. provided for people. That's awesome. Um, so I, I did the whole Goggins thing for a bit. Um, that got me down to like two fifty <laughs> because I ran that marathon and stuff like that. And then, yeah. um, which I, is probably just water that you lost. It was probably just water <laughs> and stuff. And then, um, you know, I had a friend actually from a. A uh, friend from the local veteran mil- military community in uh, where I live in, in Oregon, um, hit me up, and he actually wanted to get me into bodybuilding. So I went down that path. While you were two fifty, yeah, I started at two fifty, and then I got down to two hundred and two for a, for a, actually two ninety one ninety five for a physique show. How many steroids did you use? <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> Why? Uh, Pussy. Uh, I was on testosterone replacement therapy. No, no, no. You were on testosterone. You were right. No, it was true. not fucking therapy. Okay, so it was not therapy. <laughs> okay, so I have to be. What, uh, it's like, called steroids, uh, sir. Yes. Yeah. So I, why I, do you have to be so sensitive? I am on TRT right. right now. No, for sure. You should be. That's great. I mean, I think I'm any guy 46. after 40 should definitely yeah, be, I'm I'd be on TRT. Social Security in several months. Sh- should I have been on TRT at? Can 30? we stop calling it TRT? It okay. was fucking should I be, juice. Should, should I have been on juice <laughs> at, at uh, 30 something in my early 30s? Definitely not. No. Was it a good idea? Probably not. But did you win? But I did pretty well. Okay. And guess what? Life's I lost, about the choice. I lost. You make. I lost fifty five pounds, and uh, that that gave me the muse, like the ability to drop that weight. It gave me that motivation yeah. to goggins it out and stuff like that. And then from there on, I uh, stopped doing that mm-hmm. stuff. Been doing that for about two years of so bodybuilding and such. And then I was like, you know what? I just loved the push that running gave me. Like I loved. Uh, it was like fighting. It's fighting yourself. Yeah. For hours at a time. And um, I said, fuck it. I'm going to start start running again. I did. And then, you know, I usually, as you see, go through things full bore and sign up for, for two ultra marathons. The steroid thing is interesting yes. how people don't want to be honest about well, it. Let's, and, well, here's the thing. Let's Obviously, I'm it. just fucking with you. Right. Adults are responsible for their decisions. Right. Can steroids be used safely? I'm not a doctor. Right. And the doctors that I have spoken to, yes. Mm-hmm. Are there consequences potentially to your actions? Yes. Do, if you go into that from an educated perspective and you want to do a cycle of steroids, and by, I am by no means advocating people do that. What I'm saying is, though, 
if that's the path you want to take, right. it's not for me to stand in front of you. But right. do not piss on my fucking head and tell me it's raining. So let, let, <laughs> let, let, let's let's back into that real quickly. So I think at least the hesitation to talk about doctor prescribed therapy, I'm using yeah. quotes right now. Is, oh, there's plenty of doctors there's out there plenty of doctors. who will give you whatever amount of exactly. testosterone you want. Exactly. And it's not so, therapeutic. But here's the thing is there's kids out there yeah. that think that, you know, just, yeah, I'm on TRT. They're like 21 years old. Well, you're going to be them. now for the rest of your life because right. you just exactly. fucked up your endocrine Exactly. System. And I, I actually got off of it. Yeah. Completely, it was hard, and like if I had to be really dil- diligent to do that. Um, it's more for that. Like you don't want kids to think, "Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just yeah. take TRT now," and then they're like, "But I'm fine. I, I have a doctor. And I'm using my blood work." But you're taking hormones at 21 yeah. years old, and here's so the it's thing. more of that that route. Is Not only are I you lying to yourself in right. that moment, but a doctor out there somewhere is a willing participant too. And that's the sad part. It right? sucks. There is my dad, 76. Mm-hmm. We were. I recently had a woman on who is a hormonal specialist from Canada. Right. I asked her directly, you know, is there is there really any negative consequence to having my father have his blood work and mm-hmm. potentially start hormone replacement therapy? Right. The reality is at his age, even if you were to take the most extreme complications, he'll probably time out before those were to catch up with him. But it might extend his longevity, it might extend, right. you know, like bone mass, strength, all of those things. That argument or conversation or somebody who's in their maybe late 30s who has a different – and because all of our endocrine systems are different, or early 40s. I'm so willing for that conversation with doctors who are being responsible and you're getting your blood work done. Well, you're describing the 20-year-old who's, right. oh, I'm on TRT because the doctor will write them whatever the fuck they want. Mm-hmm. Like that not only is so horrible for the person but the doctor and also for the ecosystem if you want to call it TRT – at large as well. That's how it really changes people's viewpoint of it. Exactly. And it's concerning because, I mean, hormone therapy is serious, especially when it comes to children as well. Yeah. You know, even younger than, than 21, they use it for other means. And, uh, yeah, we have to – I mean, doctors do a oath to do no harm, right? But I've seen so many doctors do so much harm to so many people over, over the last – it's where it comes down years. to me. I'm far less concerned about what people say and far right. more concerned with what they do. Exactly. You can take whatever Hippocratic oath you want to. Right. It's uh, maybe the Hippocratic checkbook was more important yeah. to this particular. It, 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 it really is. <laughs> it's kind of what it comes down yeah. to, man. No, for, it's all money yeah. at the end of the day. So yeah. that's where, that was my, my, my journey with testosterone replacement therapy. Um, full steroids. circle. Steroids. Oh, yeah, let's call them what they are. Steroids, right? Yeah. Doctor prescribed steroids, right? At your age, at the age that you were taking them, no need. You weren't replacing no, shit, and no. it wasn't therapeutic. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. But maybe, though, I'll say this. Maybe I did have low T because of my diet and lifestyle choices. Maybe. Because I, I did. I mean, I had very low T, but maybe if like I had just cut off the cheeseburgers and then drinking six-pack a night, I would have had 100% low T. 100% would have had an impact. <laughs> Probably would have, right? <laughs> as, yeah. as now, being 35 or 34, running 30, 40 miles a week, lifting three days a week. Yeah. And I still fuck off with a cheeseburger like twice to three times a week. If you don't give yourself an out a little bit, what are we yeah, doing here? Exactly. What are we doing here? Yeah. Actually, you know, I've switched to more burgers now without the cheese. Yeah. I mean, it's, whatever floats your boat. A little bit. You, you taste the meat more. That's important. That's fair. Yeah. Dude, tell me about this wine. Let's talk about wine. Are we going to drink some? Just a little bit? No, I got shit to do today, What do you got to do today? I have to drive back to Oregon. I'm not going to, like, after a glass. Not, not saying I'm going to drink, drive. Well, first off, I don't have the appropriate drink. You don't have the, in you here don't have the cups here? So, now. Okay. Next hard time you pa- come hard on, pass. We'll hard bring pass. Bernardo next time. We'll bring Bernardo. We'll go pinky up. And we'll get shit faced, and Michael will designate a drive around as we empty bottles. Love it. Let's, let's talk about this. So <laughs> this is Dauntless Wine Company. Okay. They're based off Forest Grove, Oregon. I've been working with them for quite a few years. This is not me pitching. It. Like I've been working with them, influencer. They're friends of mine. Okay. Um, it was a military. Do you have this okay, a different bottle, but same company. Right. So what we have here is it's a military inspired. A wine company that has a mission to support veterans. Okay. Um, if you look at the bottles, they all represent a historical moment in military history. That's a pretty. You have the Pacific with you right now. I do. That's awesome. The twenty twenty. It's pretty badass. So right? people can see Pacific Theater. It's legit. And they're out of Forest Grove, Oregon, primarily doing. Do you know wine much? I mean, I tell people I'm a sommelier. Oh, okay. But I'm not traditionally trained. How far are you from Yakima? How far are you from Yakima? Washington. Yeah. Uh, Michael. <laughs> no, because I'm saying there's a sommelier course in a. Um, in spring. Oh, no. I don't do need to Why go not? to the course. One, I'm just gonna, one weekend. Because I can get the pin on Amazon. That's true. That's true. So it's a, and let's be honest. If you use some big enough words, people don't know what the fuck you're saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wine with a mission. Um, they decided to start a wine company um, that really looked back at the historic roots of, 
of war and veterans. What did they do after, after campaigns? Many times became farmers. And that's what inspired this, is veterans returning to their land, making grapes. Sherman. Sherman. Right there. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> producing some really good wine. Okay. Um, one of the awesome things, though, about this organization is they also have a nonprofit called the Dauntless Veterans Foundation, which puts agricultural grants to veterans getting into ag. Really? So when Farmer Joe just came back from, actually, maybe he was served 10, 15 years ago. He needs a new tractor. He could apply for a grant, and there's a check. If, he, if he's a selected applicant, a check's written out to him. Here's some, some help for your tractor. The whole idea is to bring veterans back to the soil. Okay. Back to... I like it. Yeah. Gladiator. Same thing. Okay. Just they don't die at the end. They actually go back to their land and plant. Hampton Roads. What do we got here? So do you know about Hampton Roads? No. Okay. So there was a, and I'm paraphrasing right now again, internet, light me up. There was a historical battle in the Civil War between the first iron ships. It was between the South had like a semi-submersible and then like the North, I might have mixed this up, it's one or the other, had a just completely and covered uh, Iron Ship. And they fought each other at like the Battle of Technology. And they say it was like this big pivotal time in um, naval history, actually. You should know this shit. Why? Because Navy. Yeah, I don't know anything about the Navy. Nothing about the regular Navy? <laughs> I know the pay scale. Okay, that's, that's important. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Miguel? The Battle of Hampton Roads was the first engagement of ironclad warships during the Iron Civil War. Ironclad? Isn't that the name of the production company you work with? It is for change agents, yeah. I, didn't, I don't know if they have any... You know what? They are based in Virginia, though. There you go. Which, you know, maybe that is it. I don't know. I'll have to ask Jeremy. Uh, okay. Ironclad warships during the Civil War was fought between the USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia. While neither side could claim victory, <laughs> the battle demonstra uh, demonstrated the viability of ironclad technology and provided a glimpse into the future of naval warfare. All right. Yeah. All right. So just, you know, there's a little bit of military history in each one of these bottles, which is awesome. I brought you the most manly ones. There okay. Was, there was a and these are all from Dauntless? These are all from Dauntless. Okay. Uh, Forest Grove, Oregon. And Do they, they sell this stuff online? Yeah. Like it's, there's weird rules about wine they online do. They, in they some ship, states. They ship nationally, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I tried to order some wine. I don't know. Maybe it was an international brand. Sometimes the vintners, depending on the state that they... I don't know. It gets a little bit weird Different sometimes. states have different identification, like restrictions like somebody needs to sign and stuff like that but yeah, yeah. They, they definitely should we'll, we'll take care of you okay yeah you don't have to yeah I'm just i want i mean it's uh it sucks when you find a killer bottle of wine you like right. and then you can't get it without going to the state do you ever come to oregon not really i mean i've been to oregon what'd you do there this is a long time ago oh probably passed through okay <laughs> <laughs> well, what's really cool about these spots is it's similar it's not quite as out there as a black rifle if you go into the tasting room like but it's it's military history you're like almost like a the Dauntless tasting room. Is? Yeah. All right. We're, I'm going to check that. Shit you have to check. Sure. I mean, we have my samurai sword up on the uh, on the wall. We've okay. got like helmets. You got flags from Iraq from all these different spots. It's, it's a good. It's a safe space we call it, which a lot of veterans don't have nowadays. Okay. I'm 100 percent bringing my wife out to check you that should. shit. Out. Honestly, the she's going to be up in Vancouver City here this next weekend anyway, teaching a jujitsu. In Vancouver, like Vancouver, Washington. Washington. Yeah. Why aren't you going? And why aren't it's you doing a some women's camp? Why don't you go and do a wine tasting afterwards? Because. I didn't get invited she didn't to invite the women's you. camp. It's a literally a women's camp. I, I know. I get it. Where, which, uh, which gym is she at? There is now... So the SBG headquarters is in, in Portland. Portland. Yeah. They just opened up a satellite location in Vancouver City. Oh, that's cool. They're hosting it at that gym. Women's only... I think there's like 15 women's coaches, 50 participants. It's pretty cool to see the women's culture... That's awesome. ...growing and doing their own thing. Yeah. I got mauled at the first SBG about 10, 15 years ago. In Portland? Yeah. That checks out. Yeah. And then the, the worst mauling I've had was from Tim Kennedy. Besides that, SPG is... is when did the, Tim get his hooks into you? He fucked me up so hard. Yeah, he's done the same thing to me. Yeah. So I... About another... Probably five or six years ago, I did one of his courses, Sheepdog Response. Okay. Uh, he's a really cool guy, right? He shows up. He's like, hey, do you have a Jew shirt? I'm like, a Jew shirt? He's like, yeah, do you have like an Israeli shirt or something like that? A Jew shirt? So hooked him up, everything totally like that. Totally not the way to ask that question, right. but I appreciate but that he did. Today, he's a Malinois. <laughs> <laughs> like, straight up. <laughs> the next day, though, and I was pretty fat then, too, right? I was like 240, 250. I was on my way up. Um, yeah, we were starting to roll and shit like that. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm from the bottom. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do crap. Like, I'm going to try and throw strikes. So I like, th try and strike him. It's like, Bottom is not a dominant position. You fuck you up. And he starts fucking pummeling me. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to run. So I try to run from him. No. And he's like, you think you're faster than me, motherfucker? And I'm like, 
the whole gym looks as I'm running. He runs after me, brings me down to the ground, stabs me, beat the shit out of me, and taught me a very valuable lesson. If you can't outrun them, don't run, <laughs> fight, he, don't strike from the bottom. He's a dangerous man. Just he, it's he's a gorilla. Yeah, I grappled with him when I was a blue belt. Yeah, I, I was, haven't had a chance to roll with him since. I would. I, he might be out at Origin Camp. I'm hoping my fucking shoulder is good enough to go by Origin Camp. Um, but yeah, it's. I love rolling with guys like him because it shows you what's possible. It's like exactly. It's like there's next level. It's like yeah. if we're humans, he's an astronaut in space. Yeah. You know, it's like different worldly view. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I was also just a white, I mean, I'm still just a like white belt, blue belt level right now rolling with that guy. And then when there's knives involved and like weapons and shit yeah. like that, different level. Yeah. The additional tools are just adding strikes. It changes a lot of what I would consider to be non foundational jujitsu. I think foundational yeah. jujitsu holds up well. Right. Uh, and I don't care which path people go down, sport jujitsu, no, whatever it is, like just. Bon voyage. Enjoy your journey. Right. Some of this stuff holds up less well when you uh, introduce tools. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's good times. Yeah. What else are you looking forward to in life, man? What else? I mean, I've been working through, still have a corporate job, but it's great. I, I do enjoy it. I have a small company called Rebel Wellness, which is a health and skin company for men, which mm -hmm. helps men put their best face forward every single day. What's it made out of? Emu oil is my primary ingredient. Emu oil? Yes, The sir. bird? Yep. Are they known for excreting their oil? Well, you have to excrete it. From where? The process of their fat glands. I was hoping their balls. I mean, Do emus have balls? I want them to. They should. All, all, all mammals, or not birds aren't fucking mammals. Da da, internet, light me up. <laughs> <laughs> light me up, please. I deserve it. Emu no, but like oil. to produce sperm, you need to have testicles. I might be making that up, but like. I don't um, know if you're living in. Miguel, 20... can you look that up? First uh, off, how sperm is created in I don't animals? think you can say that in 2024. I didn't. I didn't assume any gender. You yeah. said to produce sperm, you have to have testicles. <laughs> I, think, I don't know. I if think you're, that's scientifically. I proven. really, I'm not sure. sir. Hello, good sir. sir. I don't know if you're keeping up with the science in 2024. Right. Artificial <laughs> shit. <laughs> just let's just fact check this really quickly. It looks like, yeah, uh, I'm not seeing anything that says they are. It's exclusively produced in testicles, but everything is saying that. It's produced in testicles. So the science is concluding that pretty much you need to have testicles, but there's always a hope for your other people that don't. It's fake news. I fake think. news. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I do that. It's pretty cool. I've been I've been enjoying it out there. How did you get into that? Being an older dad, right? Like you're the, 34. Yeah, that's an older dad, right? How old were you when you had your first kid? 23. And your last kid? Uh, mm -hmm. let me see, 31. I was like four years older. Okay. Um, it's like, what is a product that I could put out to people for a reasonable price, still make good margins on it? Help. For parenting? Fucking alcohol. That's th hey, hence the <laughs> Dauntless wine that I brought here as well. My good friends at Dauntless and I'm plugging. No, yeah. but, but, um, but yeah, so I, I, I got into that. I've been participating in farmer's markets throughout Oregon, which has been great. Yeah. Really grill out, grill marketing. And really then, going back to your hippie roots here. hundred percent. Don't go vegan on us again, though. Fuck no. Okay. I mean, I, are you hunting this season? Oh, yes. What are you doing? Elk and moose. Oh, do you have moose out here? There are m like, meese, meese, moose eye m in Montana. I don't uh, know the right. It's hard to get a tag for. Incredibly, I'm sure. Even though Michael and I were hunting last year and had no fucking moose tag, and we saw them everywhere. <laughs> of course, <laughs> we literally were in a truck one day uh. as the sun was rising, and there was a majestic bull moose, totally ridge lined out, so just laying there. Like what the fuck? <laughs> That's crazy. So where are you doing the moose hunt? Maine. I've heard it's East Coast. It's where you get more readily available tags. We'll see how it goes. Is that the or is that like you're doing that with Origin? I am doing it with people from Origin. So I converted recently to just American clothing as a thing. Okay. And so I'm mostly getting Origin clothes. Where else are you getting your American clothes from? That's all I'm wearing. No, it's just Origin. Why'd you say mostly then? Because I still have clothes that are not American. Okay. Yeah. All right. So like my shoes really thread in the gray. Oh, they make shoes. They make boots. Yeah. You know, so the, the boots that I wear, let's not go too hippie ish. Well, first of all, I work in a, in the sh like I work in the shoe space in some ways. So there's certain shoes I wear. Yeah. Um, like there. Birkenstocks. Probably. Yeah. We'll just call it Birkenstocks. <laughs> I work for Birkenstocks. I work in the Birkenstocks <laughs> world headquarters. Let's just say that. So, uh, I wear, I wear those. Um, but I, I wear these, uh, these barefoot boots. They're made in Mexico. They're cool from, uh, just barefoot like shoes. Like a barefoot last? It's like a barefoot, like zero drop shoe. 
Okay. It, How's the? Is there a good tread? On there's the a pretty good tread for sure. But it lets your foot splay out. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so when I wear boots, I, I wear those, or I'll wear like my traditional Solomon hunting boots. But they're. Uh, do they have a like a everyday sneaker? George? No. Ah. No, they have leather boots. Right. So I need something for the summer if I'm not wearing like. Summer is obviously flip flops. What flip flops do you rock? Toe hold. They're really expensive, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Are they worth it? Yes. Maybe I'll look into that. You should. Discount code for Richard? Richard 20? Uh, discount code for all listeners would be cleared hot 50. F- cleared hot 50. All yeah. right. That's a good, that's a good discount code. 0% off. 0% off. <laughs> <laughs> AG doesn't do that shit. No. Uh, they are expensive as fuck. Yeah. And they are the best sandals you'll ever get your hands on. I used to rock Luna sandals. Have you heard of Luna's? No. Uh, well, no you can get cheaper pair of right. toe You can go like, if you go exotics, stand the fuck by. And if you start going exotic with exotic Can I get a pair under $100? No. Under 150 Uh, No. Under 2 Probably about 3 is going to be the entry, I think. Okay. Flip-flops you get for $100, you're going to get a $100 flip-flop. It's kind of crazy, though, if you think about that nowadays. Like, a flip-flop, it's $100 for a mediocre flip-flop. I know. That's, that's, that's why 3 to $400 for an awesome deal. one is not that Yeah, that's deal. true. That's true. Touche. And anyway. if you want to go crazy, get some fucking stingrays with like sharp. That's what I was looking straps. at. Those were like six six hundred to a thousand. Stingrays might run you about fifteen hundred. Fuck. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, they are awesome. I will say though, there are some issues I have with with. Um, if we want to nerd out on footness a little bit, um, like from a fetish perspective, yeah, or we, we talking? that's that's his his. We had we, what was the site we had up one time? Feetfinder. Feetfinder. You ever been on that I've site? Heard of Feet Finder, Fuck yes. Me. Yes. Scroll so, down here. Look at that. You can get some shark. Yeah. I would skip so, the Himalayan crocodiles. Those are five grand. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the thing about a flip-flop is your toe will naturally – I'm going to get lit up again, but it's cool. Uh, your toe naturally kind of arches down to grab because it doesn't have that heel support. That makes sense. So your toes don't splay up naturally. So when I wear like a, a flip-flop of some sort, I like to have a back, a back piece just to have that natural bend. Like a little rise, you mean? It, in, in the back, I want my heel – connect it so my toe doesn't grab it, it anchors up like in so a more like natural lifts. barefoot yeah exactly a more natural movement okay like, i would just wear some women's lifts if i were you then what are, what are lifts some uh like i like tri- jesus sandals or cro- not crocs Berkies? I, no kind of but i like the back like okay so canes yeah. I, have, I have this back Back here, this back heel, yeah, that keeps my my toes from scrunching as I'm walking. Those look like they came with a six pack of dick. They're so- <laughs> that's that's good. Touche. No, these are far is better it a than Crocs. Pack? No, it was- okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to respond. I'm lost. Deer in the headlight. Like, what do I say right now? Do I just be like, no, you have yeah. a six pack of dick? Like, how, where do I no, go from a minimum there? of a twelve pack? Minimum twelve pack. Yeah. No, that that's what I'll rock when it comes to sandals. Okay, how are we on the spot? I don't know. How do we get there? You wanted to nerd out on foot stuff, and then you said you, you were, oh you need to wear a wedge, a women's wedge. No, no, no. So I think you misinterpreted what it was. I like to have the back of the heel covered. That's all I'm saying. All right. You know, but People, maybe listen well, when you give me a fifty percent discount to um, clear hot fifty um, is like I said, clear hot fifty for absolutely good fucking 50%. nothing off. <laughs> there you go. We'll go for it. I I'll see if I can talk to Ag. Who's Ag? Ag is the owner, owner and founder of Toehold. He's What's been this? on the podcast. Interesting backstory. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm sure I could talk him into a discount. If it's greater than 1%, I would be sure. Okay, let's make it happen. We'll he would be, he'd be like, fuck you, and I could probably chip away at him and maybe get 0.05% off. That's, we'll go for it. Yeah. We'll go for it. So besides the main hunt, you're doing moose there, and then mm-hmm. you said you're doing deer here? Uh, the Guaranteed deer tag for resident awesome. Montana. So you'll so you get a deer-elk combo, right. and then I have uh, some other elk tags. For the just doing rifle? Yes. My shoulder is fucked. Yeah. Bone is hard. It is hard, and right now I could probably pull a bow, but I want to get back on the mats as soon as possible, so right. I'm going to take it very easy on my shoulder. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it'll be rifle for the year. What are you, what are you shooting, 300 wooden mag? Indeed. I suppressed? Of course. Of course. The only way to do it. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm a How, gentleman. Do you have units out here? Like you apply for a units for when it comes to tags? or just oh. There are special draw units, yeah. and then there are general units. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what well, general is a guarantee for a yeah. resident. Special draw, I have yet to draw one. Got it. Got it. Yeah, Oregon has just hundreds of, well, hundred, tons of units. Super hard to to draw. A do you have tag. a guaranteed tag as a resident somewhere? Yes. Okay. I do. I have general. Okay. General. You have, but it's one buck. So you have like general. You have one buck. What about elk? Oh, as well, elk okay. too. Yeah, but it's one one buck, one elk. But it's, it's uh, has to be horned, right? Can you shoot a doe ever? 
You have to, that's a tag. That's a draw tag. Okay. There's some units where it's either sex for like bow. Um, there's those are mostly units that are private. Yeah. Right. Um, but for the most part, it has to be like a, a buck. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's pretty hard hunting. Like uh, we we don't get as big elk as you'll get in other spots, right? Yeah, you guys have a different species. The Roosevelt, out there. yeah, the Roosevelt all, yeah. But they're they bugle loud. They come in hot. Smaller um, smaller racks because it's so like dense and woodsy. Yeah. But big bodies. So. So delicious. That's just important, right? Did you try the bison I dropped off for you last time? Yes. It's good. Bison is quite good. I love bison. I'm trying to z out my freezer. Like it's Operation Eat All Red Meat. That's all I do now. So Operation Fill Freezer can begin. Right. It's a vicious self-licking ice cream cone. <laughs> it occurs every year. Last week, I discovered that I unplugged my freezer. Did you catch it in time? No. Oh, no. Yeah. Those are real science projects when that happens. It's so gross. Yeah. Like the maggots. And... I, what I would suggest is wheel it out with your garbage can and yeah. hope that they take it. So I, it's that they won't. So I refroze it. And it. I already know where you're going with yeah. this. That's a smart plan, actually. Yeah, yeah. refroze it. Easier Lo- to deal with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Loading up in the truck, and then my buddy has about 200 acres, and we've dumped. We also lost another. He lost a freezer last year too. So we have a freezer burial ground on his property. God, that's it's where we sucks. dump the pigs after ice courses as well. When you put the work in though, and carry those things out on your back, yeah. and you have a loss like that. Yeah. It is emotional. Luckily, I haven't because of October seventh. There was no hunting for me this last year. Um, so it was mostly just my cow, which did have as much sweat, but it still had financial implications yeah. to it, too. And, and delicious, fuck, And they fucking, I, I love and eating meat every day. Like, yeah. And so, yeah. All right. Yeah. What else, man? What, what else do we chat about? What else should we chat about, man? I mean, like... So how is your transition? Like, the last few years, this is just something person I want to ask you, is like, you... Where'd you transition to media? From because I know you, you, I've heard that what do you, you mean by media. So you went from working for CrossFit, right? You got yes. out of the service. You yes. worked as a pilot, right? Yes. And then what was the leap that got you to working in the media space that you do nowadays? I don't, to be honest, I don't even like how did we if end people up here were to ask me what space talking. I work in, I, I don't know how I would describe it. Right. So I was in the military. I started. I found CrossFit by using it to rehab from when I got hurt. Okay was introduced to the founder and some of the key personnel and started moonlighting while I was still in. Mm-hmm. After my last deployment in 2010, I went from teaching at the seminars to working on business, managing sponsorships, licensing deals, yeah. and Greg's pilot. After that, I transitioned and basically it w- I was doing almost – when I stopped working for CrossFit, I found myself in a place where I had to do everything. Mm-hmm. Any opportunity that came up, it was yes. So I was doing charter aviation flying. I mm-hmm. gained a lot of that experience flying for Greg, and I was able to get a lot of uh, aviation experience in intros to charter companies right. while working for Greg. I had been a fan of skydiving ever since I had learned his skydive. So I had been skydiving a lot personally, but I started being introduced into uh, the sponsorship world of that, teaching I skydiving see. on military contracts and a little bit of public speaking. So the pie had like – there's probably some other stuff in there that I'm forgetting in the moment talking through this real time, but it's called four pieces of the pie. Mm-hmm. The aviation stuff eventually went away because it was too hit or miss. Right. And a lot of the times when you're flying big jets, you're going to amazing places, mm-hmm. not with your family, with other people's families on holidays you would want to spend with your family. There's wear and tear to it. And it's infrequent. So I got the ability to basically pay my bills through military teaching and being a sponsored skydiver and base jumper. While I was a uh, sponsored skydiver and base jumper in 2015, I did the high altitude jump in the wingsuit, which we did a fundraising project around. Got it. During the promotion of the fundraising project, I was introduced to Joe Rogan. That's how I got onto his that show the first time point. through a mutual friend named Tate Fletcher. Oh, and from back in the day, the UFC. Correct. Yeah, tough. Tate introduced me to Joe, was on the show with me the first time I was on with Joe. The second time I was on with Joe, I was on by myself as I have been in the subsequent times. But that was, it was Joe's suggestion for me to start a podcast, which I am not unique in that by any stretch. Right. He's probably spawned 10,000 right. podcasts. So it wasn't um, a written out architecture. Right. It was, this is an opportunity that's in front of me. Yeah. So I'm going to see where it goes. That's awesome. How do you know Tate? I met Tate. So the first podcast I was ever on was called the Wadcast Podcast, a CrossFit-specific CrossFit pod. One, yeah. It was up in the L.A. area. He was one of the hosts. I met him. He introduced me to Brian Callen and Brandon Schaub. I did The Fighter and the Kid, and then I did Joe's podcast. Oh. 
So oh. I met him randomly. Does he still have caveman coffee? I don't know. I haven't talked to Tate in quite some time. Right. I was a fan. Yeah. Back He's awesome. Day. He seems like a great guy. He's fucking like, awesome. Intellectual, smart, tattooed, jiu-jitsu yep. dude. Like, yep. yeah. Yeah, that's okay, very cool. Yeah, so he's still playing around in the movie space too, yeah. acting. He's like so. Mandalorian or something like that, or some Star so, yeah. Wars, something like that. That's really cool. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's how it and arrived you just here. picked it up and ran with it. So did you go to Austin a lot for the Joe's podcasts? Oh, uh, I think I've been, the times I, I've been on his show more times when he was in the LA area. Got it. First it was his original studio, then his newer one that he had built there, and then I think I've been to Austin twice. I've, I've been to the Comedy Mothership. I haven't. Yep. I've seen, I've walked around out right. front of it, but I haven't been to anything in it. I went a few... Like last month, I think. How was it? It's pretty cool. Yeah. I will say, though, what's really awesome is the security is legit. Yeah. Like all kids with cauliflower ear that you know will just fuck up any drunk asshole. That's, that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Totally. Like they no violence. So yeah. full circle there. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Not intentional by any stretch. No, not at all. There's no, no foresight behind that at all. I, in hindsight of my life, yeah. The only goal that I really knew that I wanted to do was mm -hmm. be a SEAL. That's awesome. And I never thought, to my own detriment, almost, I never thought about what I was going to do after that. How many years in the SEAL teams were you? 17. That's a long time. Eh. I mean, I know people. And there's a lot of guys that have 30 years, yeah. right? But I didn't, I had not thought about what my life would look like right. past that. It's... Fortunately, I did. About halfway through my career, I started thinking about it. And that helped me line up what I was going to do next. Mm -hmm. But I, I still, to this day, at 46 years old, couldn't tell you what I want to do with my life. I'm just going with it. Yep. I'm being responsible with it. Sometimes. Mostly. <laughs> Were you jumping last week? Yeah. Okay. With a shoulder? Yeah. Was it already hurt? Yeah. Okay. So responsible. <laughs> <laughs> 46. Get some. Yeah. All right. Cool. Love it. Sometimes you just got to go for you it. You do things. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, you got to drive. I, mean, I do. I know. Been, yeah. That's yeah. True. We've, been out, we've been out for two hours. And we, I think we covered a lot of good ground. Hit me up when you want to come back again, man. We'll see if we can drag Bernardo back on here. Let's try and do it. I got some. I got some. Uh, I'm going to try and bring somebody from your community, but on the other side of the pond, over. Okay. To see if they'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah. I'm game. Yeah. What do you want to close it out with? Well, close it out with this. Yeah. Um, your businesses. Right. Let's do that. Where, how can people find your business? Yeah, for sure. So you can find me at Rebel Wellness PDX Instagram. Just started that this last week. But what's the website for the product? RebelWellnessPDX.com. What is the PDX? Portland. Is it? Yeah. Why would you do that? Because uh, it was a domain that was open. Okay. Fair. I'm learning. We're in, we're in the process. We're going for it. Rebelwellness.com was yeah. that open? All right. Yeah. Legal things. I fucking hate your yeah. website. Name, so I'm here, so <laughs> again, we'll <laughs> Pull post that, Michael. We'll, we'll post this in the show notes. And then we also got, um, we got to look at Dauntless Veterans Foundation and then yep. Dauntless Tasting Rooms as well. Um, yeah. I'm definitely bringing my wife to one of those. You really should. Oh, we will. That's a fucking guarantee. Yeah. And also just find me on, on Instagram. Honestly, I'm going to open it up now. I've decided to. I okay. don't care about the internet. Of Palm and Pine, open account. Here's the deal. There's a lot of downside to the internet. Right. You and I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for the internet. True. There's so much positive. I think humans have a negativity bias. You'll get 99 positive comments, one negative, and you harp on it. Yep. Strip. Tug of war, right? It's it's tug of war with you and an invisible person on the internet you can't see. Let go of the fucking rope. It's done. The rope's cut. Rebel yep. Wellness. I'm also going to be posting fitness tips. I want to help some other people on their fitness journeys as well. I had um, I posted some good travel tips on my you? Instagram recently. Did you see my travel tip, Michael? Yeah, I was. I it taught, was pretty banger. Me a lot. Yeah. It was banger. It was uh, when you put the nozzle in your car to fill it up and you go take a piss. When uh -huh. you come back out, make sure that it actually put gas in That's before true. you drive down the road. <laughs> 100%. I always have wide mouth bottles with you as well. I, w I went another five miles down the road and then just stopped and actually <laughs> filled up my car. <laughs> Some fucking idiot. Did but, you find his crazy website on PDX? Uh, yeah, I didn't find it. I found this, though, which is very interesting. That's definitely... Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, so right. this is your this site, is, Richard. Okay. So, yeah, I think this, this is, is it. Great. Um, my partners are going to kill me. Um, Why are they going to kill you? No, this is just a side project that is a, this is top of funnel feeder. <laughs> I actually can't find it. Uh, are you sure? Okay. Hold on. Um, what did you say it was rebel? Let's, let's, let's go ahead and give me a second. Try it. Rebel dot heart or rebel heart dot PDX dot com. Rebel. Rebel heart dot PDX dot com. Oh, it's dot PDX. Yeah. Hold on. I'm making that up. I'm, I'm we're, answering we're, your question as if it's my fucking website. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm the one that's on the podium right now. What the fuck's my website? Let's just cut to my Instagram of Palm and Pine and cut there. 
<laughs> okay, let's, let's just do that. I'm right. like, what, what's going on right now? Let's but also, go. check out rebelheartpdx.com. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and, and do that, too. <laughs> Can't endorse them, or, uh, yeah. We don't know what it is, yeah, just but we're not going to scroll down d- any farther. We're just going to find me a, a palm and pine on Instagram, which is now opened up. Rope is cut. Perfect. Andy, you're going to be my first new follower. I don't follow you? No. It's not intentional. It's okay. All right. I understand. Cool. Um, let's get you on the road, dude. Let's do it. Cool. Thanks for I'll the time. Go. Cool.